Yeah, yeah. Yo, yo. What's good, bro? Hey, what's up, man? What's up, man? Yeah, right, just chilling no. here, just vibing. Yeah, we got the big bro Corey Mayo in. You already know, y'all. It's your man Jaguar Omec coming live and direct. You know, we take our time, y'all. We we really get our study on, and we really try to build the right presentations. We really try to create a nice visual and inform you know an informal uh you know presentation for everybody to enjoy and, and keep their knowledge and, and spirits progressing man so we got something special today that we really gonna show everybody man um we got some codexes we gonna show we got a little bit of some terms that we found with that we're gonna show we got a lot of stuff man that, that that may just pop up as we go along so you know we just riding the wave y'all shout out 432 drop you know the books that i'm actually receiving come from drop nation um this book that i'll be showing and presenting um is a drop nation book so it's not a book that drop nation wrote but uh you know it's in the archives of drop nation so shout out to them con drop tie back you know yourself the real you know everybody else that 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 really does put in the work man and of course Corey mayo you know let them know yeah, what the, yeah my shahab my shahab to the shabata the aboriginals the copper colored tribes of america you know forgotten never lost you know just forgotten and you know we're waking up we just want to you know vibe up unite and uh and my part and jaguar's part you know we just you know we each have our part some of us know law some of us you know are in the streets uh, helping everybody some of us share the knowledge uh pass us books you know whatever way whatever value you know you have you know it's welcome to this uh you know this this uh, what you may call it is reawakening 
uh, and remembering that we're doing. So in our part, you know, we want to be able to like at least provide some info, just so you can you can have a better perspective and orientation when you when you when you're doing your research and studies, you know, uh, you know, because it is it is it has been hijacked. Um, there's a doctrine they've been following with uh, so-called education and, and so-called history. So, you know, we, we got to realize that in a, in a, in a, this alternate histories that they've never told us, more than half the story has never been told. You know, Bob Marley told us that, you know, so, you know, it's, it's time to like, you know, start digging. If you like history, you like this, you're going to love this show right here, man. We're going to just freestyle it, actually. You know, this is what we do in the background. We be doing this in the background. So we just say, hey, why don't we just go live, man? And because uh, we go through these books in the background and stuff, and it's just so much info to put together. So we're just going to freestyle it today. I'm probably, we're going to show those books he was mentioning. Now, these books are made by Lord uh, Kingsborough, right? Uh, these books are actually, let me just read you the, the title of these books, you know, because you, so you can see the different uh, uh, libraries that are actually. Um, what, it, what these books are is basically um, uh, copies, exact copies of Maya codices, uh, monuments, depictions of, uh, of, of uh, sculpture and pottery from the actual museums or the actual site uh, from professors and stuff. And um, the books are called Antiquities of Mexico, comprising facsimiles. A facsimile means an exact copy of ancient Mexican paintings and hieroglyphics preserved in the Royal Libraries of Paris, Berlin, and Dresden, in the Imperial Library of Vienna, in the Vatican Library, in the Borgian Museum at Rome, in the Library of Institute of Bologna, and in the Bo Bodleian Library at Oxford, and together with the Monuments of New Spain by M. Dupax. We're also gonna read a little bit of Dupac's uh, uh, adventures there in, uh, in Mexico and Guatemala with the ruins of what he, what his uh, uh, you know, idea of, of what he saw and what he was recording. Uh, right. So yeah, uh, and so yeah, we're gonna talk about a lot of topics. Actually, not just that, but uh, yeah, we're gonna freestyle it so you guys can see how we serve the wave in real time. As uh, can't, can't drop Todd. That's right, bro. That's right, man. So y'all know we 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 showing y'all really just how we kick it, man. Uh, you know, we we both have lives uh also outside of the information so when me and his brother and the other aboriginals you know aboriginal power chief holiday um a touchiness one you know when, when we when we get our time we go over this information and we build and we study and we and we and we go over these things and we sharpen each other up and we make sure each other are you know, on the same page as we go along. So shout out to them brothers, man. Hopefully they can join in real soon, maybe. And, um, you know, we finna get it rolling, y'all. You know, it's, it's it's much to learn that that we're still learning. And we just here to, you know, keep it going, y'all. And, and stick with us, bear with us. You know, we got a lot to show. So we are gonna get it wrong, rolling, y'all. Um, Corey Mayo, anything you want to start out with, bro? Yeah, I guess I can uh, go over the uh, the America word. Okay. All right. All right. Let me see if I can pull that up. So there's a lot of uh, false history taught to us about um, the name of America and where it comes from. And... Uh, they teach us it comes from, um, what should we call it, uh, Amerigo uh, Vespuccio, you know, uh, something like that. And yeah. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to show actually something. Let me just pull it up. Yeah, man, everybody think, you know, the American name come from, you know, the so-called European, the foreigner. So I already know we got some good drop on that and, and some info to put a dagger to, an arrow, a tomahawk. You know what I'm saying? So the book is in Spanish and it's uh, called the, the 
the singular and only uh, description of origin of the in Indians of Peru, Mexico, and Santa Fe in Chile. And um, in the in the book, which I translated, um, there's a part where it starts talking about America, and it's, and you know it tells us the story of how they of America Vespucci. But then it also says, and this is a translation of it from Google, so it's a little off. But um, it says, however, other historians claim that the name America is not derived from that of a Florentine pilot and cosmographer Vespucci, whose name and real appellative are Alberico Vespulio. And Autochton is one mentioned this in, in his videos. And uh, his, so yeah, Amerigo's name is not even Amerigo. So it's Alberico, which is in Latin, Albert. His his name is Albert. It has nothing to do with America or Amerigo. Mm -hmm. This is in this book. Right here. So you can find this info on a lot of sources. If you guys just do the research, because as it's going to say here, he signed his name like that everywhere. So as proven by countless authentic Italian and Spanish documents, the same maritime charts published in Spain by Jespucio relative to their first trip, they carry their own name of Alberico. And the only letter of his third trip, the one he picked up at the foot of the mountain, Amriqua, all right? So there's a mountain, Amriqua, is the only one signed Americus. In 1507, Martin Waldsemuller published uh, and Saint did a book entitled Cosmography Introductory, and it goes on, it's a big line where it says, in which he proposes for the new continent the name of Ameriqua, based on that when in 1499, Alonso de Ojeda discovered what is now known as Central America, the Indians of the coast of Cumana designated the entire continent with the word Ameriqua. In addition, on a nautical map published in Lyon in 1522 by Plotomy, Right, it says, uh, and the author says that the Mariqua is what understood everything, the territory of the continent of the south, and that the part that today is known as Brazil was then called Terra Santa Crucis, encompassing the entire continent uh, south. The proper denomination Mariqua adds the author, the subsequent altered in America or America, it is derived from the Cordillera de Andes. Right, the Andes Cordillera, and especially of all the mountains that exist in Nicaragua, between Ualpa and Libertad, near the coast of the Mosquitoes. So, if you can uh, look it up, um, it says here continues in 1515, the name of America and Europe was already known. Therefore, it seems proven. He says that instead of being Alberico, just Puzio, who gave his name to America, was he who has taken this name by modifying so his gloriously with the purpose of snatching Columbus, the just and unquestionable glory of his discovery. All right, so the name, he actually took it and named himself Americo, so he can be seen as the discoverer before Columbus. And, um, you know, if we really go into it, I wanna see a thorough research on this tribe, the Americua. And I wanna see this tribe say that they are, that they came from somewhere else or that they're Moors or wherever, because there is uh, people suggesting that that's where they get the name. Uh, Morocco, but if we know this is the true old world, and we know Drew Ali uh, says, you know, that you are the Canaanites and Moabites and stuff, we know that they came out of this part of the, this side of the world, Canaan and, and all that. So right. I wanted to start with that, you know, just to, uh, uh, that's just one way of what we're going with with this show, you know, like, you know, so we can see uh, all different alternate alternatives that we've been taught, you know, that's or, deep. or told. That's deep, man, because a lot of people really do, you know, think that that's the man's name and it clearly told you right there that you know he stole that from an actual tribe so yeah and you will see depictions of uh indians in the caribbean in spaniola and in south america called called with a t tamericans and tameri you know the land beloved land the ancient name for egypt tameri that's right. Maria, they, they try to say, I guess it got hijacked into a name, but that was, that's over here as well. So to Americans and uh, Americua and all that, you know, that's this is an American word is what basically we're trying to show you. It has nothing to do with any European trying to name it their name. All right. So um, even though it had many names, that's that word originally is from here. Basically, it's a, na a Native American word it's from Central America. That's a head buster, y'all. I hope y'all heard that. That's right. That hey, hey, I'm telling y'all, man, we we pulling them out and we giving it to y'all. We hanging it upside down, y'all. All right. 
So yeah. Um I got uh I got a word, man. If you if you uh was you going to this would you, you want to go, go ahead, ahead, man? Nah, go okay. ahead, go ahead. Um what I'm gonna get into, man. Uh y'all bear with me, y'all. Uh let me uh get some things together. So, you know, here we go, man. Like I say, you know, that was easy work right there. And everything is usually in the Spanish. You know what I'm saying? So once once you pretty much um check out, you know what the Spanish has to say, man, they letting you know. So, you know, of course he had to take time to translate the book himself and, and then actually use Google translate to solidify what it was saying, you know, and Hey, there we have it, man, America. But I found a word that is actually pretty new, um, in this book that was, um, shared in drop nation. And um, it's actually the Scottish Kings from 1005 to 1625. And actually the book itself, you know, is basically an outline of all the Kings and Queens from those years from 1005 to the 1600s. And it's a great book, it's a great read um just bear with me y'all i'm finna let y'all see what it is in a sec all right um so um yeah while, while you do that i can uh go ahead and get it and uh, just show my screen so i can show them the images of the uh, okay. that'll work yeah let me know when you're sharing uh, So we got that we got the lightning because the energy the vibes you know is, is we're breaking spells so so we got the energy outside you know rumbling and stuff don't don't mind that can you see that bro uh no nah, uh, we just you got to share your screen i thought it was share hold on no okay hold on give me a second yeah Go ahead, do your thing, though, bro. I ain't trying to hold you. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and choose my screen uh, from your end. Like, all right. Hold up. Damn, hold up. Get you right, right quick. All right. Uh, all right. We can see your screen now. Okay. So while you do that, I'm just going to read a couple things. So um, if you guys ever heard of the word papoose, you know, you, you've heard of the rapper, right? Uh, papoose is, uh, it says noun, uh, a type of bag used to carry a child on one's back. And uh, a, they have an image of the Seminole uh, carrying her baby. And you can see it's clearly copper colored. And uh, also the second definition is a young North American Indian child, papoose. All right, so you guys can learn that. We got um, from um, Crania Americana, which is a anthropological book, famous book. You guys can look it up, Crania Americana. It says, uh, Aboriginal race of North and South America, the American race. The American race is marked by a brown complexion, long, black, and lank hair. The eyes are black and deep set, the brow low, the cheekbones high, the nose large and aquiline, the mouth large, and the lips tumid and compressed. Again, that's from the uh, book Crania Americana. All right. uh, so just in in interrupt me when you when you're ready, bro. So I'm just gonna keep reading. Oh, so uh, if from, you from um, another, 
Go ahead. Oh no, nah, I was just gonna tell you when once you finish that little line, um, see if my screen is sharing because you know I have to do this PDF. I don't know if it's uh gonna be sharing or not. Yeah, you're sharing my screen actually right now, so so switch. Yeah, but you know I can't um it'll 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 take me out of the PDF. Yeah. Let me see if I can do it. Yeah, y'all just bear with us, y'all. Um, I think you gotta do it because you're the moderator, man. I can't. All right. Or oh, maybe yeah. did you stop? Did you stop screen sharing? Maybe if you yeah, stop. stop. All yeah. right. Go ahead. Can you see it? Can you see the uh the book, bro? Yeah. It's, well, um, it's because it's, there's a little delay from my video to okay. yeah so I, i'm still all seeing right. my yeah. so just just read you know let's just start reading all right um i got a book here y'all bear with me it's the scottish kings uh you might have to share my screen click on my book bro because i think they show it's showing you on the youtube yeah i clicked on yours so but yeah Yeah, it's got you on the YouTube screen. Hold on, man. I might just have to read. I might just have to read out of it. Uh, hold on, all right, quick, y'all. Bear with us, y'all. Yeah, you gotta uh, try to have your Google Air on air window open, like on the side somewhere, so you can moderate like back and forth. Yeah, that's one. Like, it won't. It won't let me. Um, it like take up the whole screen. It won't let me moderate. Uh. From that from that PDF file. Uh hold on, give me a second. All right. All right, so I'm gonna try it again. Y'all bear with me. I'm just trying to upload this book. So y'all can see it. Uh All right. Bear with me, people. Okay, then. So, um, what I got, what I'm trying to pull up, y'all, is I found basically another word that the Europeans was using to describe our, um, to describe our, our land. And it's actually this word right here so i'm gonna i'm gonna start it right here just go ahead and give y'all the word i'm i am gonna go into the book hopefully it'll allow me to show y'all where it's at in the book um like i said the book is called scottish kings from 1005 to the 1600s and it's giving you an outline of each king from those times and as i was reading the book i found that they explored to a land called Vinland. And if you see right here on my screen, Wikipedia, it lets you know that Vinland, Vineland or Winland, Old North, Vinland is the name for North American land explored by Norse Vikings, where Leif Erikson first landed in in the century 1000 okay approximately five centuries prior to the voyages of christopher columbus and john cabot all right Vinland was the name given to north america as far it as it was explored by vikings presumably presumably um including both newfoundland and the gulf of st lawrence as far as northeastern new brunswick all right, y'all. So I hope y'all got that, man. So I'm finna try to upload this book right quick so I can show y'all where I found it at. Basically, you know. there's there's a lot of evidence, there's a lot of records, historical uh, myths, uh, legends, even chronicles uh, in European countries like Norway um, and all England and Wales and all those places uh, that tell you that they were over here. Basically, that's what we're trying to show. 
Um, so he just showed you Wikipedia. He's gonna show you the book. It has it as well, and uh, and the list of Scottish kings. It tells you that they were that there was uh, a navigation done over here in the 1000s. Uh, so so you know, there's what we're trying to show is that everything they've told you, everything you got to question everything. Everything has been a lie. You know that means that you know like they they have in their accounts these same uh, Nordic people or whatever uh, that they brought back servants with them or slaves. Native American, they call them red people. That's right. All right. So when you're talking about you're bringing people from over there, man, we <laughs> Indians have been going over there. The the water currents, right? The Gulf of Me the Gulf Stream brings you all the way to Europe from the Caribbean. It's four times harder to come back that way. You know what I mean? You could just sit on a log and it'll bring you straight to England, right from you know the Caribbean. No sails, no paddles. All right, it does return, but the, the the winds and everything actually goes more that towards that way, so it's easier to bring from there. That's right. That's it, man. So yeah, I'm seeing that they they still won't allow me to actually share the book because I'm sitting here looking at the YouTube on my phone and I see it still got ventilating up. So what I'm gonna do is just so. You know, y'all won't think I'm telling a story. I am going to at least read it. And for people who, you know, want to want this book to read for themselves, contact me. You know, if you know how to reach me or whatever, man, because I am not a liar, but I am going to read the part that I found in this book. It's not allowing me to show um, this, this PDF because of uh, it's not in my normal pdf files is actually on the, the normal like regular uh computer file so y'all just bear with me um uh, this is actually from the the uh outline of king malcolm the second he is the one that that uh actually is res you know responsible for um, malcolm the second and I'm just going to read where it says, you know, where it gets right to it. Um, it says America or Vinland. OK, y'all see, see that on the screen. It says the, the Northman who discovered America in the year 1000 called it Vinland from the vines they found growing there. Two Scots, Hake, which is H-A-K-E and Hakia or Hekia, H-E-K-I-A, who were very swift of foot, went with the expedition that sailed in three ships from Iceland and landed in Vinland in the year 1006. So it says it right there and it's giving you sources um, also in the book um, to where they found the uh you know the term vinland or vandaland they also use you know that was another term vandaland or vinland so that's just a you know another word y'all that you know when we're doing this research and you're reading uh any you know german french or spanish documents you see that term vinland you know it's talking about america so I wanted to definitely point that out to the people, y'all. Um, and we just gonna keep it rolling, y'all. Like I say, if you really, you know, want to take a good look at the book, let me know. I will contact you. Um, you know, I guess uh leave leave leaving me a message in the comments, you know, you know, give me some thumbs up too, y'all. So we're gonna keep it rolling, man. Um, Corey Mayo, if you wanna yeah. Get yeah, something. go ahead. Yeah, put it put it on my screen. So, so I guess somebody was asking for the book. Uh, so let me show him. Okay. Let me know when uh, it's on me. All right. All right. Sorry. All right. 
All right, so again, it's in Spanish. I'm just gonna show you real quick. I'm just gonna grab a certain uh, uh, section so you guys can see. All right, I'm gonna copy paste. All right, because yeah, people, people playing games, you know, they're always doubting stuff, man. So. Even though, you know, Google be messing up things, but um, I can see what it's saying. So yeah, I can show you guys. All right, put it there in Spanish, put it in English. All right, let me zoom in. Again, in 1507, Martin Wildens Mueller published in St. Day a book entitled Cosmographies Introductories, New Content, the Name of America, based on that when in 1499, Alonso de Ojeda discovered what is now known as Central America. The Indians of the coast of Cumana designated the entire continent with the word America, all right? So, you know, we also got the Amaru Khan, right? The Amaru in South America. We got Tamari the beloved land, the ancient name for Egypt, the real name for Egypt, because Egypt is a Greek word. That, that's not what they call themselves, all right? All right, so just to continue with a few things here, you know, uh, I'm gonna uh, show you a little bit of things of me, uh, the videos I worked on the uh, from indigenous American to uh, African American before we get into those uh, images. And just, this is a, a, a skim through. I have the actual books, all right? This is a may but I have the actual book. All right. So it says in books, letters and notes on North American indigenous people of America by George Catlin in 1841. He lived amongst them. If you guys uh, research George Catlin, he lived amongst them. He drew them. There's a lot of paintings and you'll see how he drew them in you know, the depictions. Uh, so you can go see for yourself. It says all primitive tribes known in America, a dark copper color, dark copper color with jet black hair. While most possess curls in the extreme and every level of wavy hair in between. The texture of the hair is generally fine, soft, or silk, or coarse, or harsh. The hair of the men falling down to their hams and sometimes to the ground. You know, who has long hair like that that goes to the ground, man? Just go to Jamaica and you see what I'm talking about. It's divided into plates, divided into plates or slabs, two inches wide and filled with profusion of glue and nerve. They say profusion of glue and nerve. That, they're talking about a dreadlock which become very hard and remain unchanged from year to year. All right, dreadlocks. Today, this form of hair is called locks. All right, All right let's continue, hold on. Okay, so this is uh, right here, what you're seeing is a, called a fugian. That's the Aboriginal from uh, the Patagonia land, Tierra del Fuego down in Central, uh, I mean, sorry, in South America. Uh, past the Magellan Strait, uh, you can research the Fugians. You'll see even Charles Darwin writes about them. He went over there because he had to see them for himself. And he writes that when he saw them, he felt like he was meeting the, the, our first ancestors. That's what he says in his own words, our first ancestors in South America. That's deep. You know? Okay. We've also, uh, they found pigs. You know, these pigs are from New York, Pennsylvania, Maryland. Uh, yeah, you know, so you think the Mongol uh, straight-haired uh, Native Americans of today, you think they need pigs? You know, th this is archaeological stuff they found. Dig, it, dig, dig the info. Okay. That's right. This is, a, this is a painting from Catlin, actually, that I was saying earlier. Let me show you. Uh, all right. So this is the picture of the Inca, right? We got, you know, some mix here, you know, but he's definitely a so-called Negro. Um, this is a, a, a drawing uh, from the book American Holocaust. This is what they did to the Indians. They were, they burned you alive, hanged you. Um, they grabbed your babies, uh, threw them against the wall, you know, uh, used the swords, cut them in half. You know, they were testing out how sharp their swords were on babies, things like that. You know, don't ever forget what happened. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. So I want to read this. This is from uh, Race Relations in Virginia and Miscegenation in, South, in the South, 1776 to 1860. It says, uh, let me see, in their several localities, these people are supposed to be of mixed, uh, hold on, sorry. Sorry, my fault. 
I didn't know it was a video. It's a video. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Let me just pause it right there. So it says, in their several localities, these people are supposed to be of mixed Negro and Indian origin. In Ohio, 1843, a group of persons were excluded from the public schools because they were declared to be mixed Negroes and Indians. In Maine, also, we find opposition to the admission of such persons to the public schools. In all the southern states, there are found to be records of cases sent to the courts of appeals in which the lit litigants attempt to show that they are descendants of Indians and not of Negroes, and hence that they do not fall subject to the slave code all right now when they were trying to not be they what he's trying to say and what really happened is that they were not trying to be classified as negroes because then they would be fall under that whole government thing you know you lose your identity all right so there they, there's many cases of, of of your ancestors trying to fight this legally all right these cases add interest to the study of pedigree but they must be considered as additional evidence of to the extensive mixture of racial blood in the slave states to the visitor in the South, the physical characteristics of many Negro slaves bore witness to their Indian origin, all right? In the state of South Carolina, early Negro Indians history was much influenced by conditions that resulted from the occupation of the territory to the South by the Spanish. From early times, the Spanish and their Indian allies, all right? Indian allies, meaning they had help from your brethren, all right, tribal warfare. In Florida stole South Carolina slaves, and harbored so they're saying spanish and indian allies stole south carolina slaves the thing is if you read this if you really know history you know that the spanish were here before the english that's right in america so what do they mean by they stealing slaves they're stealing indians there was no english plantations or colonies yet when the spanish were doing were supposedly doing this that's right all right so i mean i i, I didn't even pick up on that i just realized that man you gotta <laughs> All right, so you see here, dreadlocks going down to the floor, right? All right, we got Mato Topa, a Mandan chief. All right, these are West Malaysian uh, Negroes from uh, the Philippines and South Asia. All right, so there's not only, you know, a couple of colored people populated the entire plain, not just Africa. All right. We have our brothers here, the Missouri Indianers, says an auto Indianer, uh, chief of the Puncas. Yeah, they got, you know, different hair. Um, but, you know, you can't take that copper color out of them. Man. And, and, you know, they was make sure they was tribes, waves of, of people coming from Asia. But they're also, like the, the Catlin says, all kinds of hairs and textures, all right? All right, so let me just get to a couple of books that I have here. So it says in the uh, Indian races of uh, North and South America, uh, right in this book right here, I believe James Adair. Um, in the picture right here, you can see Cortez and Moctezuma, it says. So you can see how they clearly they depict the Indians or Moctezuma, right? All right, so in the books, The Strait of Magellan by Admiral Don E. Cordova. Uh, this is an actual account of his voyage over there. It says that they are ordinary size, the Indians they're talking about, right? Rather inclining to middle stature. Their limbs are well proportioned and they're very agile. You're very agile. Oh, we know that. Withstanding, notwithstanding, they use very little exercise. Their complexion, it says pale yellow inclining to a copper color, but some of them darker than others. There's nothing either remarkably disgusting nor pleasing in their features. Their hair seems to be rather like that of horses and cattle than that of human creatures. So, of course, these white people are compared to their hair. So they're they're gonna say, not like human creatures that are in the house. I mean, wonder about that. We got we got the thunder outside because we're breaking spells again. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> well, my fault. Hold on. Peace, everybody. Right, Peace. So, Crania. Oh, what's up, AP? And are you in the house? Okay, okay. Yeah, in the bed. All right, all right. All right, all right. So it says in the voyages and travels, uh, made in the 16th and 17th century, volume one. And this is from the Haliox Society, uh, the Lord in uh, as well. Uh, the Haliox Society, if you guys know about it, they document, they see bought a lot of the. Uh, the chronicles from the English and the Portuguese and the Dutch 
and they collected them and they made they published them uh, so in one of their books it says uh, this is during the travel of uh, Francis Drake in Vivian it says um, there is kind of flies or gnats with long bills, mosquitoes, which do pick and molest the people very much in the night when they are asleep and prickling their faces and hands and other parts of their bodies that lie uncovered and make them smell wonderfully. Oh, there's a kind of small worm which creepeth into the soles of men's feet, especially of the black moles or any. All right, you're gonna, you're gonna hear this a lot, black and more. Now we, we understand more it was than was a fraternity or a certain people group. It was just talking about people of their complexion or people who are greater or more than than the person that was describing them because they saw you know people dark skin as royal people throughout history in those times. They knew. All right. So uh, again it says here Blackmore parentheses Indians. You're not talking about more, you're talking about Indians. And this is not a, a Moorish Morocco person. This is Francis Drake, and these are English people. And again, in the next page, it says, I do remember that the last person that came out of the ship into the boat was a woman, a Blackmore, and again, Indian in parentheses. All right. From uh, the book, History of Hernan de Soto. I'm almost done. You know, I just want you guys to like, so we can see the perspective, have a clear perspective as we continue. The video. Hernan de Soto in Florida, records of the events of uh, 56 years, 1512 to 1568 by Barnard Ship. Um, in this book, they're actually retelling an account of Verrazano. Um, but it says here that the Spaniards penetrated into Florida. They went all, they went all the way to, uh, I'm sorry? You sharing it still? Because it ain't popping up. Yeah. Um, I don't know what happened. Hold up right quick. Let's try to see. Uh... Yeah, I mean, sure. You can pick me as. I doesn't matter, man. Yeah, like no, show no, an no. image or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Really, bro. I mean, I don't know. People really need to see the screenshots that I took from the actual books, you know. Oh man. Yeah. But um. So it says that um, when they got, it was in uh, Florida. It says, during the three days that the Spanish recruited themselves, they saw noon coming from a place full of reeds, seven boats, which the Spanish told them. It was in the first a very large and very black Indian of aspect very different from those who inhabit the interior of the country. The barbarians of the coast are black in this manner. That's how they describe you. Because the sun is there warmer than elsewhere. All right? That was um, on the travels of Hernando Soto. Um, and this book called Ancient Civilizations of Mexico and Central America by Herbert Stinden, uh, 1917. It says, the mosquito Indians of the coast of Nicaragua have very considerable Negro admixture. They are fishermen of low culture. It has recently been possible to connect the original Indians of this unheld other trips to further inland. All right, so it just said, they have a considerable amount of Negro admixture, right? The mosquitoes, and we know, we, I don't know if you get about them, they're always going to tell us that they're mixed, they're African or Sambo. They call Sambo or African. But right here in this book, it said they're actually made from the inland, farther in, not coming from the Caribbean or Africa or anything like that. When you really study this area in those times, you know that there's an island off the coast of the here, it's called Providence Island. Providence Island was the second colony of the pilgrims during the same time the colony managed. they had in the caribbean uh next to nicaragua it was called providence island or old providence island and they brought all their indian uh captives from war from the Beckwood war and the king phillips war and all the stuff they were going up there in new england and all their colonies they were bringing them to the bermudas uh, uh jamaica and to providence island uh bahamas and places like that and in in so there was pack with in Providence Island with the mosquitoes, mixing with the mixing with the mosquito Indians. All right, and uh, the pequits are described as Negro cannibals in a lot of accounts. So we just talked about the same thing over and over. All right. That's right. Um, in the book, uh, the ancient cities of the New World, 
uh, Travels and Exploration of Mexico in Central America by Desiree Charney from 1887. All right, it says that I select for myself some masks which portray the various Indian types of marvelous truths and at times not without some artistic skill. Among them are types which do not seem to belong to America, a Negro. All right, so you got to dodge that. The hijack, you know, what what, what what have all our lives that all so-called Negroes come from Africa. So this uh, author's perspective, uh, he's so surprised because he's finding Negro masks, Negro pottery all over Mexico. And he says it, it seems not to belong to America because it's a Negro, right? And he and says see plate. So this is uh, some of the masks. And I says, whose thick lips, flat nose, and woolen hair, woolen hair all okay. right proclaim his and then it says again proclaim his african origin so you know we have to dig on all that okay so what tribe is he talking about let's dig on the tribe let's see what they're saying about themselves let's go into the stick codes let's go to these boxes well, let's go to the popovu let's go to all these books the kashikel the annals the the you know so we can really get a clear perspective. You can see the, the, the symbol of the cross all over the old world, the real old world. You know, it's not a Christian symbol. Uh, we, we know Quetzalcoatl carried that everywhere. And a lot of the Native American pictures and the clothes, you'll see they have crosses all over them. And that's the emblem of uh, eating the crossing of points. All right. So it says a boy's Catlin my life from under Indian or Catelyn. Again, Catelyn. Let me see. Oh, in reference to uh, copper color. So these are not Indians. The Indian is copper color, black hair. Many of these people, especially the women, are half breeds. Okay, so even Catelyn, <laughs> even Catelyn, he, I, I, if I remember correctly, he saw a, a, a tribe. He was chilling with this tribe. He knew they were there, the Indians. But then he saw another tribe. And he said, these are not Indians. The Indians is copper colored with black hair. Many of these people, especially the women, are as light as half beats. You know, who are they? Who, who is he talking about? All right. All right. So, um, you know, who was the first slaves? That's a future video. I'm going to show you how there's many records of um, accounts of how many Indians and uh, Native Americans were being taken as servants over to Europe and West Africa. Uh, some of them enslaved, yeah, you know, the English and Portuguese, the so-called transatlantic slave uh, being brought to Cape Verde. All right, I think we have that screenshot over here. Just one moment. All right, actually, let me just read this. This is regarding the fugions, what I was talking about earlier, about the uh, aboriginals of South America. This is actually the words of um, Charles Darwin. As an old age reported that the astonishment which I felt on first seeing a party of fugians on a wild and broken shore will never be forgotten me at once rushed to my mind. Such were our ancestors. All right, and that's uh, from the pet. Uh, uh, and uh, you know, this is a drawing right here, but I just I showed you before what they really look like in the depiction. And so, even he's saying those are ancestors, he's not saying what he says in his book talking about apes. All right. So in the book, North American Indians by George Kellen, again, it says the world know generally that the Indians of North America are copper colored, that their eyes and their hair are black, that they are, mostly, well, he says, uncivilized and consequently unchristianized. So that's what he determines to be civilized, to be a Christian. Yeah. All right. So, so we got to dodge. We got to dodge the hijack in many ways. Always. All right. So that's Kellen's book. All right. So I don't know if you want to show something, man, or should I continue or what? Oh, no. Nah, continue doing your thing, bro. You already know, man. You're dropping straight heat right now, man. You already know, man. I'm just going to, okay. you know, do my thing whenever you, you you know, we good, bro. So this is, yeah, this is from the elder, the empress right here, the, the queen, or whatever you want to call her. The, uh, uh, you know, she says, we've been here, declared the empress, explaining that the original Native Americans were mostly of dark complexion. She said the light-skinned Indians of Hollywood fame were minority tribes in the Northwest that were mixed with the blood of Chinese invaders. They made up less than a third of the total population of Indians on this land. She says, 
white folks don't owe black people in America 40 acres and a mule. They need to get off our land or start paying us some rent or taxes, she said. All right, so I agree with her. Uh, this is one of uh, Catelyn's uh, paintings. Uh, I mean, you can clearly see the, the difference between, this is actually Catelyn right here. Uh, they painted him actually. And this is him next to the Indians. So you can see, I mean, this brother right here, right next to him has yeah. red paint in his face. He has That's red right. paint. So even be under that, you can see the, you know, the features and uh, the, the complexion. So, so, I mean, you know, they don't look like the ones from today. So come on. This is uh, actually Jaguar Old Mix logo right here and Inca Emperor. Sinchi Roca. We got Atahual, you know. All right, so we got more images. Hold on. It's a slight delay, bro. Hold on. It was a slight delay. All right. Is it still sharing, though? All right. Yeah, it's right, it's right then. Okay. All right. So this is the um, a painting of the uh, treaty that um, William Penn did with the Delaware. And um, if you know what, if you read the letters of William Penn, he, he, he lets you know straight up that the Indians are of a black complexion, not unlike much like the, like the Egyptians, right? Much like the Egyptians. And uh, the language is Hebrew, much like Hebrew, he says. All right, so dig on that. This is a Pequot uh, Native American that still that lives in the you know they're in the reservation doing their thing to this right now. They got the casinos up there and everything, and this is what um, what I was saying uh, in past videos that you know I keep, this is what a Cape Verdean looks like, and most of that area in New England, um, all these tribes look like a lot of them look like Cape Verdeans, and um, it's Cape Verdean Massachusetts like one of the biggest uh, so-called minorities, and um, we know that you know they were brought over there. In the 1500s, even 1400s, P uh, Indians from um, uh, South America, Caribbean, many of them were taken to Cape Verde in the West African country uh, islands of the coast. Uh, uh, they, they call it the coast of Guinea and Seville and Europe and Portuguese uh, cities and towns uh, before the so-called transatlantic slave trade. All right, so you can see there again down the Guinea Bible. Uh, this is actually a picture from where I'm from. This is in the Caribbean side. Because uh, we got Pacific and Caribbean and Costa Rica. And, you know, this is uh, the natives inside, you know, the aboriginals who were told they're from Africa, you know. But um, there's no uh, history to that, to back that up. This is another person that lives there. Uh, this is a, you you can, you, you can consider a true aboriginal uh, Costa Rican. You know, they say that uh, they come from uh, Jamaica and some of them did come in the 1800s. Uh, yeah. But I know that the Aztecs were over here in the in the 1600s. It, they were called the Sigua. Right. It was an, an Aztec warrior tribe that was down here, and they were enslaved by the help of the mosquitoes. They were given to the English, and the English brought them to Jamaica before they came back. So I mean, if you really want to dig on stuff like that, where's the origin of everything? Where did it start? It started from Costa Rica to Jamaica before they came from Jamaica to here. And we've already shown Aztecs what they really look like. So if there was an Aztec tribe in this part of the country in Costa Rica where the most of the aboriginals are today, you just gotta put two. All right. That's it. Like, so there was an Aztec tribe. All right. So these are, uh, you know, uh, some um, aboriginals, this is, uh, they call them afro Honduran. Of course, you know, that's we always gotta go into the history. Go into, they say, you know, if you read into these histories, they'll say that these are escaped slaves who, who shipwrecked. If you if you go to any of these places where they have these Afros, so-called Afro-looking people, right, they're always going to, you're going to see there's a story you're saying about a shipwreck. Why is it always the same shipwreck story? And then I happened to come across that with the mosquitoes, right? So I dug into it and I actually realized that there was no shipwreck. There was actually the Pequots and the English coming over here, running away from the Spanish who, who had just invaded them in Providence Island mm. and took in over Providence. So do your research. They didn't teach us none of this stuff in school. This is mosquito refugees in Nicaragua. You know what I mean? All right, so uh, Drop Nation, you know what I mean? Go 432thedrop.com. This is home. You want to vibe, you want to vibe peacefully, you want to learn a lot, you want some pure water, that's where you get it. All Hawa right there. All right. We also got, don't forget, 
Uh, my boy, he created this. Uh, Shakam Kabar Shal Jashurum, a Tantan history of ancient America. There's a Google Plus page. Go check it out. Get a lot of info from here because he'll get the screenshot and of the book, and then I will look for the book myself and find it. So I found a lot of info from from this brother. He does a lot of good research. Go to that page. You know, join it. And uh, this again it says. Uh, this is from Bermuda. It says, St. David's Island, Bermuda, its people, history, and culture. It says, this lost native language of Massachusetts is waking up again. What is Bermuda's connection to the Pequot? All right. So what did I say earlier? The Pequots, the English were bringing them all down here. And they were bringing up natives from the Caribbean up to replace them because it was easier to man manage them. So they wouldn't escape because they wouldn't know land. They weren't locals. Doesn't mean they were Africans. That's how they get you with these words in Wikipedia and all these things. But you go to the actual accounts, you'll see with what they were bringing up. You know what I mean? Because that's the thing. We'll say, oh, so the Indians were different than the Africans and, and the Africans were better for work. Nah, man. So what they're saying is they're basically bringing other native uh, so-called Negro tribes of other parts of America, South America, Central America, and bringing them up to the plantations. And then later on in history told that to you that they were different from the people who were there. So they separated them from Indians and, and they called the other ones Africans, but it was the same people. And yeah, the local ones did uh, at most of the time do some grimy stuff and, and they wanted their freedom. So they were like, fuck it, let them enslave those new people. And I'm free, I'm going, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm free, fuck that. So yeah, it did happen like that, you know? So I was talking about, I know I'm going too, too fast, so I'm sorry if I am, man, just you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> All right, so uh, this is uh, actually what I was talking about earlier, the letter from William Penn himself. This is actually written in 1683, all right? He wrote it to a, a committee of the Free Society of Traders, right? So he was the one they founded Pennsylvania, right? They named it after him, William Penn. Um, William Penn lets us know. Let me just get this a little bigger. It says, the natives I shall consider in their persons, language, manners, religion, and government with my sense of their original. For their persons, they are generally tall, straight, well-built, and singular proportion. They treat strong and clever, and mostly walk with a lofty chin. Of complexion, black, but by design, as the gypsies in England, they grease themselves with beer's fat, clarified, and un uh, using no defense against the sun or weather. You know, why would they need defense against sun or weather? There's must need be swarthy. So he's saying, since they're, because their skin is swarthy, which means black, uh, it, you know, don't need no defense from the sun or weather. All right. He's letting us know. Their eyes live in black, not unlike a straight look Jew, he says. Mm. And huh. Let me just get to the other. Okay, right here. So it says, their language is lofty, jet narrow, but like the Hebrew, and signification full, like shorthand in writing. One word ser serves in the place of three, and the rest are supplied by the understanding of error, imperfect in their tenses, wanton in their moods, part participles, adverbs, conjunctions, interjunctions. Uh, I made it, I have made it my business to understand it, that I might not want an interpreter on any occasion. And I must say that I know not a language spoken in Europe that has words of more sweetness or greatness and accent and emphasis than theirs, all right? Where does language really come from? Okay. Yeah, they're talking about romance, romance languages, you know? So everybody knows William Penn, you know? Um, what what I'm trying to show is that we got, this is just, I'm just scratching the surface here. And this, this was just from part one of my indigenous American video, uh, you know? So we're just scratching the surface. You've heard Chief uh, Holiday and I talked to this one go on and you know, show us, you know, the bones, the DNA that found here, how it links more. And, and to Australoids or Australian people or West, uh, 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 the South Pacific uh, people of the Pacific, uh, then Africans, um, like this says here, new genetic analysis takes aim at the theory that just one founding group settled in the Americas. And this is actually a, a person from the Sudui, Sudui people in Brazil. Uh, you can see how he looks, all right? Yeah. All right. He yeah, so this is the uh, what I was saying about earlier. So this is from Proceedings of the Eighth American Scientific Congress held in Washington, the government of the United States of America. Anthropological Sciences, all right? It says the Sigua, the southernmost Aztec outpost. 
All right. See, they don't even teach this history to us in Costa Rica. We don't know that there was Aztec tribes over here. We we don't know that. They don't put that in. They don't want us to correlate because that side where they went supposedly is where all the uh, so-called copper-colored uh, Aboriginals are. Mm. That's where and that side. So they're like, wait a minute. If they're Aztec, then the Aztecs were black. That's right. All right. So you know, it goes on and explains how they were enslaved by the mosquitoes and taken to Jamaica. Now you guys can dig on that. Just find the article online. The Black Seminoles, we know that. You know, we read it earlier in, in one of the videos with Chief Holiday. The Seminoles can trace their lineage back to the uh, Mexicans and Aztecs and things like that. The whole Creek Confederacy can yeah. do that. Yeah, so we got the books. We read it before, you know. All right. You also had the... um. So that you remember that that book the the what was it, the Kachikel something like yeah. that the annals of the Kachikel yeah I think that was relating to some Aztec um information also yep I also have the origin of this book um it says uh from Professor Constantine Samuel Rafinsky or C S Rafinsky he has a lot of good books. I recommend you guys dig on him. It says the continent of America has been the field of phil philosophical delusions as Africa of fables and monsters and Asia of religious creeds. All the various systems and theories of monks and philosophers on the origin, climate, inhabitants of America have been repeatedly destroyed by facts. And yet they find to this day many believers. To this day they speak and write of a red man of America. While there is no, not a red man, nor never was in this continent. To evince this result, a single but striking point, doubted to this day by superficial inquirers, it is sufficient to mention that there were in America, before Columbus came, nations and tribes of the following complexions. Coppered, tawny, olive, dusky, white or pale yellow. So he says white or pale yellow. Hmm. Dark brown and black but none red unless painted. So what he's trying to say is that's, that's der derogatory. You know what I mean? This, this right. It's not red. That's right. Don't, don't believe that whole red thing. All right. So it says, and that all these complexions are also found in Asia, in Polynesia, and in Africa. All right. So what is the difference? You know what I mean? <laughs> the Native American Negroes or Black Indians have been seen in Brazil, Guyana, Caracas, Popayan, Choco, North California, and some such as the Auroras or Car Caroras of Cumana were black, but with fine features and long hair like the Yolos and Galas of Africa. Others in New California, latitude 32, called Esteros, are like the Hotentots, the Muquas, Tambukis, and many other Negrician tribes. Not black, but dark brown, yet complete Negroes, all right? Mm. With, mm -hmm. with large thick lip, broad, flat noses, and according to him, very ugly, of course, you know, his racist view, with <laughs> hair, yeah. crisp. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man, they, they throw it in there. They got to throw it in there. Yeah, so they can they always try to too too. Exactly. They're like, all right. <laughs> but in this time, he has, oh, well, I don't know what kind of agenda he has to write this, but so he says the Negro features belong to the form of the hair rather than the color, since they are in Africa, Asian, Polynesia, black, brown, yellow, olive, coppery, and even white Negroes. White Negroes. The American Negro, the, the great level plain, 900 miles long, 90 white, separating the Andes of South America from the mountains of Panama, were black and with woolly heads. Wool. Wool. How do they describe Jehoshua in the, in the, in the in Revelation, right? Wool. Woolly head. Yeah. They are mentioned in Dangaria and all early accurate writers. So, you know, um, we got a lot. We got a lot to show. <laughs> this is a Spanish book. The book is deep. This guy actually says he did. He basically determined and proved that the uh, ancient Mexicans were a Negro land. He says it uh, in his book. It's in Spanish. You know, I think. Oh, I think I got some. Here. Oh yeah, I do have it translated here. So, let me see. So very okay. So I got this image right here. These words translated, so you can see it right here. So it says, several isolated but concordant facts allow us to suppose that before the formation and development of the three great ethnographic groups of which we have just spoken, 
Pampas, Andean, and Caribs, a large part of America was occupied by an inferior race of Negroid type. The conquerors found scattered throughout the New World small tribes that from the first moment were, let me see, considered as belonging to the Black race. Such were, for example, the Otomi from Mexico, the Snails from Haiti, the Arajos in Cutara, the Arabos from Orinoco, that's in Venezuela, South America, the Porcelhis and the Malayas from Brazil, the Manatos in Quito, the Chuanas from Darien, Darien is in Spain, where Balboa uh, also says he encountered a tribe of Negroes. Mm. Says the repeating, uh, continuing from that book, right? Says the skeletons of structure that are very different from those of the American red race, which is several parts of the continent has been found from Bolivia to Mexico, must be referred to this race. Worthy of attention in this regard are the two skulls of exaggerated prognatism with a lowered forehead, very developed apophysis, and strong superciliary oh, oh, man. arches that in the Mopas Mountains found the illustrated professor. Dr. Juan de Dios Carasquilla. So what he just said there was basically they have found bones, right? Where was it again? In Carasquilla, I think that's in Colombia. Um, they found, uh, you know, bones that belong to a so-called Negro, not the American Red Race, as he's saying. He's talking about the Mongols. So again, he says the skeletons of structure that are very different from those of the American Red Race. All right. Uh, if you guys don't know about John Ogilvy and his drawings, you know he has a, a book. I, you know, I have this. We can we can share the live. If you guys need a book, just just send us a, a message and it to you. John Ogilvy, you can see all these images, uh, how he depicted this from the 1600s. You know, so I mean, he draws maps. He puts the tribes next to the maps. He shows you the color of the people in these areas all over the Americas. And they don't look nothing like the Native Americans that you see today. That's right. All right. And this is a historical uh, source they use. All right. All uh, right. So, oh, shoot. Okay. So, in, oh, wait. This is from a book uh, called uh, Mexican During the Centuries, and Mexico and Los Siglos. And this, I took a screenshot of the cover because I just wanted to show, you know, how they drew the Indian. Damn, yeah, back there. Yeah. Looking just like me. Shit. Look, look, I mean, you can see the, the difference, right? How they picked the Spaniards or the conquistadors, whatever hijacked lady that's it in the, in the middle sitting there in the throne. And, you know, but you see the Indians, right? That's just you. That's all of you. Mexico. And all Mexico, right. Oh, y'all. Y'all see it. And uh, this is just like uh, they're talking about their gods and how they're depicted as with black faces. So every time they did a ceremony or they did their 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 um, traditional uh, depicting the ancestors, they always, for some reason, put on black masks. And that happens throughout many of the Native American tribes in the Americas. All right. That's peace, man. I'm talking about it, man. All right. So we already know the Olmec heads, you know. So, I mean, he talks about it in the book. He talks about more tribes that he found. It says, but the te but peremptory tests of former existence of the black race continent are found in him. And others speak to us, the primitive chroniclers, such are the Caracules of Haiti. Okay. <laughs> so, again, the, the guy is saying, he was talking about the, the tribes, the Indians, right? He's saying, but still today, this former existence of the black race, some of the Indians in our continent, is that his remains found in him. And others was the primitive chroniclers, such as the Caracules of Haiti, the Californums of the Caribbean island, the Arguillajos of Cutara, the Auroras, the Jaradas of the Orinoco, the Chamas, the Guiana. So basically, the more, even more tribes. You see there, in Honduras, it says there two areas of Newport being found by the Spaniards in Louisiana and the Moonite albinos it said discovered in Panama and destroyed others by the Iroquois. All right, so they just said he just said the Iroquois are a Negro too. Right. Okay. All this has been shown that in very distant or before the existence of the Otomis are talking about Omics because the Omics the same time as these Otomis. 
or more well invading them, the black race occupied our territory when the continents were still united. See, this is an anthropologist. All right, this is in a, a, a prestige libraries in Mexico. I got this from an archive library. All right, he's letting you know that you are ancient. You've been here, you know, and uh, you occupy this, this continent uh, before, even before the, the continent were united, you know? All right. And he continues says, as a clear trace of the black race, we have some little heads of Teotihuacan, and we've seen a clear type of serpentine mask regarding those little heads. We'll say that in the innumerable tumuli of the ruins of the great city are found between different objects. They are made of clay and end in the neck or appendix. Uh, that's what he's describing the way he's finding. All right, so let's go to another book. All right, this is another book. This is a really good book. I wanted to show you guys as well. Uh, it says, an inquiry into the distinctive characteristics of the aboriginal race of America by Samuel George Morton, MD, author of Quenya Americana. The book I mentioned earlier, which is another good book, all right? So you guys go in there because this is anthropological scientific research, all right? These are these are renowned uh, anthropologists that they go to as sources, all right? And it says here, and this page has physical characteristics, all right? It says, it is an adage among travelers that he who has seen one tribe of Indians has seen all. So much do the individuals of this race settle each other notwithstanding their immense geographical distribution and those differences of climate which embrace the extremes of heat and cold the half-clad fusion or again fusion right we know what the fusion is now right when we see these words we got to remember all right this is what darwin said was our ancestral aboriginal uh, negro from south america uh, right. shrinking from shrinking from his uh, dairy winter has the same characteristics, lineaments through in an exaggerated degree as the Indians of the tropical plains, all right? Same as the Caribbean. And these, again, resemble the tribes which inhabit the region valley of the Mississippi. And those, again, with skirt, the Eskimo skirt, not of the Eskimo on the north. All possess alike the long, lank black hair, the brown or cinnamon colored skin, the heavy brow, the dull, sleepy eye, the full compressed lips and the salient but dilated nose. These traits, moreover, are equally common to the savage and civilized nations. All right. Now, part of this good says here. It cannot be questioned that the physical diversities do occur equally singular and explicable, as seen in different shades of color. All right, different shades of color, right. varying from fair tint, varying from a fair tint a complexion almost black. All right, because he knows nobody is black. Black is a crayon color. He's saying almost black. Saying that's how dark the, the, the people he's in reference to. And this too, under circumstances in which climate can have little or no influence. So also in reference to stature, the differences are remarkable in an entire tribe which perfectly proximate to each other. These facts, however, are mere exceptions to a general rule and do not alter the peculiar physiognomy of the Indian which as is undeviantingly characteristic of that of the Negro. All right, again, these facts are an exception. He's saying these lighter skin, these shades, they're an exception. That's right. He's saying that you can't, you cannot rule out the general rule, right? Of the Indian, which is undeviantingly, whatever that means, look, look it up, characteristics as that of the Negro. For whether we see him in the athletic cherub, you are athletic. The athletic cherub who plays basketball, who dominates. I mean, Costa Rica played England the other day. And England, all couple color brothers, man. Then they played Belgium like two, three days later. And this is, I'm talking about soccer. And again, all couple color brothers over there. And our team, this is the same. So <laughs> the athletic cherub, all right? You invented sports. The temples of the Mayas and the Aztecs and, and some in South America, uh, mostly in South America, they had uh, ball courts in almost all their cities. They had teams. They had fans that dressed the same color. Their stadiums, their ball courts were built so ill that there was a dude talking on one of the temples on the top, and he can be heard throughout the whole arena. 
like mm. if he was on a speaker, like if he was on a speaker. So I do the research, man. Where does these sports and things come from? All right. And a lot of the times it was for life or death. So imagine yeah. how good. <laughs> so imagine your game had to be on point. All right. So it says for, um, again, um, the athletic cherub or the stunt Chaiman in the dark Californian or the fair Baroa. He is an Indian still. And he cannot be mistaken for being of any other race. Mm. Again, you are Indian. You are not African. You cannot be mistaken for any other race. You are ancient to this land. This is, you know, an anthropologist who studies craniology. He wrote the one of the most famous books in that. Facts, man. All right? Father. Crania Americana. Do the research. Man. Right? They say we don't have sources. They telling us we just Google masters. They tell us that we Google scholars. All right. So stop listening to these people, man. Tell them to pull up their sources. That's right. All right. Because what it says here, it says Atlantic Journal and Friends of Knowledge, a cyclopedic journal and review of universal science and knowledge, historical, natural, and medical arts and sciences with numerous figures. All right. It says editor C.F. Rufinsky, professor of historical and natural sciences. Right. 1832. It says in the bottom, knowledge is the mental food of man. All right. It says, number 10, the Americans cannot have sprung from a single nation because independently of the languages, their features and complexions are as various as in Africa and Asia. We find in America white, tawny, brown, yellow, olive, copper, and even black nations as in Africa. Again, and even black nations as in Africa, not Africans like Africans. Also, dwarves and giants, handsome and ugly, features flat and aquiline noses, thick and thin lips. All right. So right here we got the, uh, uh, okay, so I talked about this on my, one of my videos. So Crayola, for many years, I believe they took it out in like 1997 or, or in the 90s, right? Because they knew eventually we were going to figure it out if they left it. If they if they had left this crayon color, we would have figured it out. All right. But um, the, basically, you see it's called chestnut today. It's the one they call chestnut. All right. So you can see that's just basically a, you know, it's it's more brown. You can see a little bit of reddish. That's the coppery, right? The copper color. Right. They called it Indian red. They changed it, they say, because they thought it would confuse the children in school because then the children in school would think that that's the color of the Indian skin. And that is their their explanation for changing it. That is their explanation. Research that. All right. Indian red. All right. Dodge the hijack with the red. All right. So this is um, from an article I got uh, from a journal, scientific journal from the West Indies of uh, uh, anthropology. They did a study on some bones they found in the West Indies and they were of Negro. And this is pre-Columbian, meaning before Columbus, before any slave trade came. You can, uh, uh, I think I got the screenshot here later on. We'll I'll show it to you guys. Um, this is the from the British Museum. This is a painting, an emblem of America. Um, you know, that's in California. It's supposed to be an allegorical depiction of uh, a Californian, but there's nothing allegorical about this. The Why they say allegorical is because, you know, this is Queen Khalifa. Queen Khalifa, the name of, of California, right? We're relating her and from research, you know, we're almost there with the, with, with the, with the whole putting it together and everything, trust that, uh, yeah. to Queen Sheba, to Queen Sheba, Amazonian warrior. Look at the bow and arrow she has. This is an Amazonian warrior depicted as the emblem of america all right this is in the british museum okay so why would they paint why why would they do an allegorical uh depiction why don't they just draw the mongols if they're the so-called emblem of america all mm -hmm. right i got this from a, a painting of columbus uh i basically uh zoomed in go ahead somebody want to speak oh no go ahead bro we yeah, so I got this. Yeah. All right. I got this from a, yeah, um, an image, uh, a painting of Columbus, a really old painting. It's in one of these uh, prestige museums in Europe. And you can clearly see the Indians. These are the Indians he's standing over. I don't know if everybody can see that. So, I mean, 
I don't know, man. I mean, this oh, bro over here in the bottom, he looks a little bit like Wesley Snipes to me, man. You know, <laughs> you know I, I don't see any kind of mongrel, you know. And the sister in the bag, you know, I don't have to say much, man. Come on. She got, she's jeweled out. She got jewels on, man. She got gold necklace on her head and one in her neck. You know what I mean? They came here for your gold. And you were like, man, they silly, man. They What the hell they want this gold for? We got so much of it. They're silly, man. All right. And, uh, yeah, this is what um, Chief showed us the other day. Uh, the Meg Mega Lopez that they just found or they just released the information they found it in Guatemalan jungle with their new lighter uh, technology toy that they've right. been <laughs> wanting to use, uh, but not really at the same time because they don't want us to know what's all under all this jungle. You know, but this alone, you know, this alone is changing history. A vast interconnected network of ancient cities was home to millions more people than previously thought. Like I just said, this is from uh, Natural Geographic. I got this screenshot. All right. Now here's another one from the Business Insider. Archaeologists found thousands of hidden structures in the Guatemalan jungle and could rewrite human history. Hey, man, we ain't making this up, man. We're talking about Wakanda for life. You know what I mean? Again, it's probably Maya network discovered on the Guatemalan jungle. Jaguar warrior. I'm not, I'm not just saying shit just to say it, man. Black Panther. There is no Panther. Panthers are just big cats. The right. original uh, melanin begins with the jaguar. The jaguar is the cat that passed the black to all the cats, even domestic cats. So what's older, you know? Facts, man. You hit right, another. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, Seal of California, another Seal of California. You see the depiction they have there? All right. And I was saying earlier how Swarthy means black. You know, you know that the uh, white barbaric tribes eventually invaded the European mo Moors or so-called uh, black royals that were there. And, uh, um, you know, Schwarzenegger, you know, Schwarzenegger, yeah. you know, that's a total hijack. He just took that whole last name. <laughs> Negus, they mean the black king. That's Schwartz right. Negus, you know, Swartz Negus, Swarty Negus, the black king. He took the title. <laughs> That's right. Because their last name is supposed to be really like uh, Sh Sheriff or Sheriff, something like that. It's spelled like S C H E R F F. That's supposed to be his real yeah. last name. Yeah, you know, they're Jiddish, they're Jiddish language and shit. Yeah, from those areas, Austria, Germany, East Europe, and uh, you know, we all didn't come on a slave ship. Some of us were already here. Some of us, <laughs> the information is getting updated. We just read a lot of accounts of the anthropologists who are actually doing the the research and science, saying this was a Negro continent. Not some of us. It was a general rule. That's right. Again, general rule. Come on, you guys got to remember all this stuff. A general rule. You got to change your perspective and your orientation. Stop looking from the outside in. Look from this, from here, outside. Everything started. Right. This is the source. This is the source. You got to get your orientation together and your perspective. All right? That's right. You know, they put all, all, all of you in, in plantations and whatever. And, or, you know, a lot of you weren't even, most, a lot of them, a lot of your ancestors were never slaves. A lot of your ancestors were freed men or free colored people as they call right. them in, in the census all right so not all of you were slaves but you were put and moved around in groups and, and, and oh yeah let's move let's move all these free colored over here or let's move this tribe over here or let's send them to west africa liberia sierra leone do the research how did those countries start you know what i mean right that's right man right. i got a so, uh, yeah, when you finish, man, I'm going to hit him yeah, with go that. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, man. That's that's good. Go ahead. Hit him with that. that, that since you, you know, since you speaking of, you let's know. Presser John, yeah, let's yeah, go. Yeah, that's, man, you already know, bro. So I know a lot of people out there, well, you know, not a lot, but for those who do study and uh, try to keep up with, you know, what's what's really going on, you know, in an all round angle, you know, like I say, we study, you know, all sides. We study, you know, the land over there and the land over here. 
because you got to realize our people were so advanced that they traveled throughout these continents for thousands and thousands of years okay so we have had people that were rulers and kings who were known as indians from this land and the other lands also okay prester john is known to be a myth but we've been unlocking the whole mythology and bringing out the facts because prester john who was known to rule the three indias which would be of course america then you got africa and then you got europe slash asia you see what i'm saying those are the three main lands that were ruled by this supposed to be mythological character prester john now of course i tried earlier to uh screen share the scottish kings uh outline of the kings from 1005 to the 1600s and for some reason it won't allow my computer to uh show the screen for my pdf but i actually in the scottish king books it actually speaks of the time of a certain king named king david now for those who've been researching prester john you know that he has ties to king david also joshua that's if you've been doing the research if you want to catch up a lot on this holly con drop 432 drop nation he got like a whole series on the prester john breakdown and it's worth the 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 wait is worth the watch because it's you ain't gonna stop watching it but yeah. long story short y'all i'm gonna go ahead and get right to it i do have uh this book as y'all see here um can they see my screen you can see my screen bro yeah no actually you're looking at mine i think okay let me click on mine yeah is there now I got, I got to wait for a couple seconds because it's a little delay. Oh, yeah, I think it is there right now. Okay. Okay. Um, so, bam. Okay. We got right here. This is a book that, um, of course, you know, is in the library, man. Uh, Prester John and the Legend. Let me take y'all to the top, okay? Prester John, the legend and his sources, compiled and translated by Keegan Brewer, okay? You know what I'm saying? So, as you see, Crusade text and translation, you know, they're giving it to you about the series, about the translators. You see what I'm saying? Keegan Brewer is affiliated with the Center for Medieval Studies at the University of sydney australia you know so this is not lightweight and this right here people i want y'all to take a good look at this picture for a second y'all now prester john in that name and in that sense is known to rule um i think it was england right am i right bro not only just england but the whole europe he he was known, yeah, like uh, like they all of Europe knew of a great king. Uh, they called him Christian. They call him Christian the hijack. But they all knew outside of Europe, the the, the everything else was called the three Indias or the three Ethiopias, and uh, that's where he ruled the rest of the world basically. And you saw the image, right? You guys saw the image. It's a, you know, it's you. <laughs> that's right. And y'all see right there, man, that that's clearly an aboriginal man. Look at the nose. Look at the cheeks. You see that woolly hair on his face. You know, hey, aboriginal, copper colored, dark skin rulers in those times, y'all. And we got one right here. This is actually what we came to find out to be the actual 
David the first, King David the first. Because when you do the timeline of Preston Dunn, I think it starts from 1124 to like 1153. Or it might be even earlier than that. But this book yeah, right the first, here. The, the first accounts, yeah, were around that era. Yeah. Um, but that they looked the for him for 500 years. They looked for him for 500 years. That's how bad they wanted to get to Preston John. That's right. They had to. They had to see how true was this this man and his great royalties to to actually run can the three. Can, can I ask a question? Sure. Yes. I heard even when when people was wanting to come speak with Preston John, they had to bring a dragon interpreter <laughs> because he spoke the dragon language. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, may, most likely, man. Well, so what we got to break down what that means, the dragon language. You know, we're talking about mythical creatures. We're talking about an actual language, uh, a magical language. What does that mean, you know? So that that's, that's, yeah, man, because there is a lot of relation with the whole Khan dynasty with Prester John. That's what we're trying to relate, you know? Uh, the whole Wan Khan, that is him. Uh, Genghis Khan supposedly is his nephew who took over the empire. We know Genghis Khan, uh, or illegitimate, uh, nephew like we don't know if it's an actual right, uh, nephew right. or that he married into the family because we know that from stories that from uh Wan Khan right uh from the Mongol uh legends that Genghis Khan and this Wan Khan had beef and you know if you just get the Wan that's Juan John in Spanish John Juan right so so Khan you know we already heard we already talked about the Khan earlier right Amaru right. Khan Right, so that's that's all American, Jamaican, Dominican, you know, that's all you Mexican, you know. That's right, it's in there. The con is in there, baby. Yeah, you said old Mac, old Mac, he con, hmm, one, one con, one, and and um, he had beef with Genghis Khan. Now, you know, we all know Genghis Khan was a Mongol. Who was the Native Americans? Who who was the people they call Native Americans today? What is their uh, ancestry? You know, I mean, these Mongols did come and invade, man. These Mongols did, you know, it, it does line up with the history we're reading. It does line up with what we're seeing today. We see something else there that's not you. You are supposed to be in the red reservation. Fuck reservations. The, 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 the foreigners should be in, for in reservations. And we should have the land. Right, you know, but right, um, yeah, right. That's it, man. And so, Corey yeah, Mayo, can you pronounce that right there? What was that? Uh, the ill pretty pretty yani red. The prester, yeah. As uh, the uh, sometimes he was just known as the prester. Okay. The prester, and so it, right here it actually says. The prester, and then it says red, which is really interesting. So, uh, <laughs> are they relating him with the red man? Now we know Ethiopia, right? So they he was called the emperor of Ethiopia. Again, we're not talking about a specific place in Africa because it didn't exist back then. That name there, in that region. We know historically Ethiopia, the so-called Negro race, was called Ethiopian. That's, That's right. why Selassie I chose to call his empire Ethiopia because he knew people can actually relate to something, have a, a backup to, to pro proclaim in a nation or, or, or an empire, right? So, so okay, so there's many levels of this. So let's dodge the hijack. So yeah, he was the king of the dark people or the, or the lands where dark people dwelt. That's right. But they try to, you know, they give him the name and they give the story as, it's, as if it's a myth, but when you look at the actual accounts and even like we say, the, the, the story of Joshua and the Bible that relates to Prester John, uh, like, like we were yeah, saying. I mean, I mean imagine if they're looking for him for 500 years. And if it's really in Ethiopia, as we know today, why was it so hard to find him? That's right. You know what I mean? Let's get down to it, man. Um, Check it out a little bit, y'all. Get let y'all see some of the, you know, the outlines. Crusade text and translation. You see it. Editorial board. You know. You see the names. All right. 
You know what I'm saying? So we like I say, man, we just been getting to it, y'all. So yeah, with us for a say, okay, y'all see the contents, the beginning of Preston John, 12th century, then second um section, Preston John in the fifth crusade, early 13th century. All right, Mongols and travel writers, mid 13th to 14th. You see what I'm saying? So this is a pretty good book, you know, given the the accounts and key uh positionings of Preston John, man. All right, and say the aim of this book is to collate and present the major sources for the study of the legend of Preston John for the medieval text. These are supplied in both the original language, usually Latin, and English translation. Because there are less material to the usual discussion of Preston John, the modern texts are presented only in English. Most of the translations here are on my own. Two have been reprinted with permission from their copyright holders. You know, so he, he giving you, you know, how they came about, man. You know, although much of the material presented here has been known in the field of Preston John studies for some time, nearly all of it has been only began available to those who have knowledge of various foreign languages including latin german french and portuguese so like i say y'all when you know that's why you know we we looking at these other languages and we're seeing what they have to say and these are the sources they lead us to y'all so you know relating to aboriginal uh what they call scholarship it's it's and then the main reason is because he lived in a mythical land he lived in this faraway kingdom that was so abundant with food, with fruits, with rivers, with gold. Who are they talking about? Where is that? Where, where, when, did, when they came over, what did they do? You know what I mean? What did they say? How did they describe, uh, you know, the Aztec Empire when they came or Cusco? They couldn't believe it. You know, they couldn't believe it. What they had encountered, what they had found. That's right. You know what I mean, the they fresh were being smelling good. You know, they even said our breath smelled good. When Columbus came, I'm glad uh, when Columbus, so uh, regarding the Khan, right? We know that Columbus, we, well, Prester John is said to live in the ancient uh, 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 land, like the far out land of Katay, right? The, as the Grand Khan. And there's, he's related to Prester John. Columbus came looking for the Grand Khan. When he got to Cuba and Hispaniola, especially in Cuba, he, had, he, he really thought he had reached Katay. He, he tells you in all his accounts, right? And he was looking for the Grand Khan. And this is Prester John. This is the same legend. This is the same person they've been looking for for 500 years. He even brought his Hebrew, Aramaic, and Babylonian, uh, Chaldean uh, translator, Luis de Torres, a Morano Jew, more a Morano, uh, basically, uh, he, you know, not the Jews that we're thinking about, but he was a descend. These are descendants of Hebrew tribes not israelite but hebrew tribes that eventually went over to that side that's why they spoke hebrew when they came over here with columbus and um why would columbus bring a hebrew interpreter because right. prester john is known as an israelite king and in the, in the in the book of marco polo when he went to Cate, he said he was going to look for an israelite king prester john all right <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah, so read him a little that. bit of the. Uh, so read them about read them the read them a little bit about that. All right, I'm finna get right here to this little first chapter, man. Cause I was like I say when we was reading into it, we found it, man. They give it to you really right off the rip, man. On um, basically what this man accomplished, you know, in his rulership, man, and basically man you know think about it the three main lands that we see on our maps today is the world so you talk about a man who basically was ruling the world y'all all right here we go section one the beginnings of prester john all right 12th century all right in 1122 a mysterious man calling himself john patriarch of the indians appeared in rome and narrated before pope calixtus ii stories of marvels and miracles which took place in his homeland especially in connection with saint thomas who in christian tradition was supposed to have converted india 20 years later when a tremendous battle took place in the far east the battle of 
Katwan near Samarkand in 1141. Europeans would cast their mind back to this earlier John. In reality, the battle was between a Mongol warlord by the name of Yilu Dashi and the leader of the Muslim world, Sultan San Sanjer, who was utterly defeated. Crusaders in the Holy Land interpreted this victorious Mongol warlord to, warlord to be a mighty Christian king and dubbed him Prester John convinced that he intended to assist them defeat the Muslims in the Crusades. And thus the legend of Prester John was born. Around two decades later, an anonymous European writer adopted the persona of Prester John and wrote a humorous letter describing his marvelous kingdom. This work was widely read in the Middle Ages and survives in many different versions. As discussed in Appendix 2, Section 1 ends with Pope Alexander III's letter to Prester John chastising him for his arrogance. That's what's up. So, yeah, I mean, that's deep. Right in the beginning, it tells you the patriarch of the Indians. That's right. right? The patriarch of the Indians or a chief of the Indians, right? The chief of the Indians. I was going to um, read. Um, are you going to continue? All right, go ahead, bro, because that's really what I just, you know, this is a 345-page book, y'all, so <laughs> yeah, you know, it's giving you the history as much as possible about Prester John and his travels, his uh, his battles, who he married, you know, uh, some of his children, and it, it, it's a good read because it, it actually gives you some accountability of actually someone from what they call the Far East, as we read just now, the Far East was considered past Asia. And we all know, okay, you go past Asia, then what you gonna run into? America. Yep. So yep. you can also yeah. look at it uh, uh, in a perspective if let's say they flipped our maps. Now we're talking about, if we flipped our map and you go East, that means you end up from, from, from Europe, you, you know, or Africa, I mean, you're gonna end up in America as well. So both ways you look at it, you know, you gotta you gotta always know that these are keywords. When they when they say the, the, the Far East or the farthest Ethiopia or the third India, or you know, they're really talking about us over here in America, because it's legendary. It's always far, so far for them. They couldn't cross the barrier. That's right. That's it, man. You know, so you know, like I say, man, this is really like I say, if you know. Y'all get time, read the story of Joshua in your Bible, because that's the real, you know, that that's those are the real uh war accounts that you know actually are, are relevant and, and actually took place, you know, you know, relating to Moses. Uh, you know, it's it's the same thing, you know, you know, uh warring with the uh the Arabs or the Moors, you know what I'm saying? It, it was all the same. They the same people. So this is this exactly is so. So when they're talking about Arab, yeah, you know, they're just talking about you know the tribal warfare between the Canaanites and the Israelites and all that, and the Mongols trying to invade. So I mean, not everybody was together, but everybody was trying to fight certain powers that were trying to take over. So I mean, Genghis Khan was trying to take over everywhere. So they wanted Prester John's help. You know, and right. they also wanted their help against Moors who wanted to take over Europe or so-called Christ Christian people. All right. So, All right. um, yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah, you go ahead, go ahead. I got, I got so that. That's all right. All right. So, can you switch it to my side? Yeah. All right. All right. All right, cool. All right, so this is from another book. It's called The Land of Prester John. These are, we're just putting a little real quick, real quick thing so you guys can just like, uh, uh, you know, go further with it. So it says the Crusades served to lift the corner of the veil. The Crusaders touching the fringe of, an, of the unknown. So again, when they're talking about mysterious lands far away, fringe of the unknown, they're talking about over here. All right, remember they hadn't discovered it yet, supposedly. Uh, Columbus hadn't done his thing. So it says that when they were, 
you know, touching the fringe of the unknown, they heard and saw many things. Thus, Europe was made aware of far Cathay, like I said, you know, they were looking for Cathay. So they found far Cathay and the great Khan, the great Khan, one Khan, or the American, the great king, priest king, Khan means priest king, the old man of the mountain and his uh, assassins. And so it was that from the dim light of far away, there rose and grew the tale of Prester John. So he's also known as an historian Christian, right? When you uh, drop, uh, showed us when, you know, go into the etymology of Nestorian, it means like wise, renowned, old, old king. All right. And so this, this thing says old man of the mountain and his assassins. All right. So we related him to King David, right? If you've watched my video of uh, per, uh, Jerusalem and Peru, Saksai woman, the city of David right there in Cusco, we know that the city of David was Mount Sion, if you look at uh, scripture, all right? And also considered the center of the world, right? And in scripture, the so Mount Sion is considered to be in the center of the world, all right? As it says in Jubilee. And, and then also uh, Jerusalem is considered to be in the, save, the center or the navel of the world, right? The word Cusco, you guys can look this up. The word Cusco actually literally means navel of the navel, right? Navel. That's the only place in the world that actually their word means navel because they try to relate that Jerusalem could be here or Jerusalem could be there. And they're talking, right. but none of those none of those places are named actually navel anciently. That's right. All right, and these are mountains. So if you go to Middle East, those are hills. Those ain't mountains. That's not Mount Zion. That's not a mountain over there. Those are hills. You know what I mean? They got us so flipped. They flipped the game so bad on us. We're so lost with that. You know, that's why we don't really relate to that. We're like, ah, oh, what is that? That's hydra. That's religion. That's, oh, man, if you knew they were talking about your kingdoms, your royalty, your king, Prester John, your King David, and that's right. a, chief, a chief of the Indians, forget the whole Hebrew and, and, and religion thing. All right, we're talking about real facts, uh, real life things that really happen. All right, so this great king lived in the mountains, just like King David lived in Mount Sion. And just like Cusco is in a mountain, all right? So let me show you. So we got Machu Picchu, we got Cusco, we got all these ancient Inca places sacred to them. Cusco was considered the holy city to the Incas. You can read that anywhere. They considered it a holy city. That's right. All right? And I just want to show you a, for, a floor plan uh, before I continue with Pastor John. I want to show you a floor, a floor plan of Cusco. An actual floor uh, depiction, a map of how Cusco looked, the city. All right. Okay. So this is from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, the Jewish National University Library. This is a painting they have over there, right? In Israel, on the other side, the, the fake Israel, right? The state of Israel, all right? So as you can see, just look at the look at the, the the street plan look at the the floor plan this is cusco right and you can see it has about seven gates you can read uh, uh jerusalem josephus says has eight gates so you know give and take you we're missing a gate here so there's seven gates here you can count there might be another one hidden somewhere in the back here but you could see where the temple is there's three walls that's right right three walls josephus tells us that jerusalem has three walls, all right? Now, does this look like huts? Does this look like a village of huts to you? Yeah, no. This is royalty. This is a whole town, a whole city. Right. Those, are ten, those are houses right there. Those, the are, house. those are buildings. Those are like three, four-story buildings. There's church temples. There's all kinds of temples already here. And when um, Pissarro, I believe, is the one who went over there, when he got there, man, and he saw all the gold and the walls and the ceiling and the pearls, diamonds, rubies, this is actual history, people. So, you know, there's a lot of correlation. We ain't just trying to say something because we want something to be real. You know, we're looking for the real because Israel is real. Is real. Israel, you are real. You know, you are real. Israel. That's right. 
right? That just means a tribe. That doesn't mean a whole religion thing. You got to dodge the whole hijack because, you know, you had different names. You had tribal names. You knew who you were and your codices, right? You got the Quiche Maya. Then you got the Quechua Inca. Quiche Quechua is the same. You got the Moshika language and the Moshika people in Peru. And you got the Mexica, the Aztec in Mexico. We're talking about the same people. That's We're talking right. about a migration. We're talking about a migration that started all the way in Aslan, right? All the way in Aslan. That's Utah. Okay, then. Tell, I was going to say, tell them what Aslan is for those who don't know. Aslan was in Utah. I did a video. It's called Hebrew Couple Color Tribes of America Part 2. I show you the maps. That's right. That have, that have right in Utah, it says ancient home of the Aztecs. These are historical maps, right? And we know Utah is Judah. The Spanish didn't call it Utah. They called it Judah with a Y. Y-U-D-A-H. Look at the etymology of Utah. You will That's find right. it. Go right now if you want. All right. Or let's just show them. Now that we got the thing here. You know, senses help out. You know, common sense. We're not, we're not, I mean, we got too many things to cor corroborate that we are building, uh, the, you know, the pieces together and we are putting it together. Right. So Utah, like it says here, Western Apache, Judah, high. Judah. Just switch the Y for a J. We know J's didn't exist in Hebrew. That's right. Not even not even Y's. And this pen the real in the Paleo Hebrew. Yeah. So, you know, we 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 you know there was a migration from there all the way to Mexico and then it continued until they got to the promised land, Cusco, Peru. That was a long journey. Imagine going from Aslan, Utah, all the way to Peru. That's a long journey. A long way, man. That's a long way. You know, Moses, Moshe, Meshika, Meshi, right? I want to show you this, all right? Because let me show you guys. So there was a friar, uh, one of those Jesuit priests who was living with the uh, Aztecs for a while. He He's one of the most uh, renowned person for for their, their kind of like their, their origin story. And again, well, let me see. The book is in Spanish. It's called Historia Indias de Nueva España and the, and, and the Firm Land or the Terra Firme by uh, Father Fray Diego Duran. All right. So this is volume one of his book, 1867. All right. So he talks about it's in Spanish. I'm going to translate it for you guys. Something about that in the year 1193. All right. 1093. He's saying, right that came to this land, they're talking about Mexico, a congregation, the Mexica, the Mexicana, which by then it had seven cities. And you're gonna find Cebola, this ancient, seven, the seven cities of gold, the seven caves, the seven cities, you're gonna find that correlating and pushing to Utah as well. Hmm. All right, the Mayas have the same story. All right, Cebola, read about Cebola, right? And Estevanico, the more who came to try to go to Cebola, they were looking for the city of gold, Mendoza and Estevanico. They made it a cartoon. They made Estevanico a white kid when he was a moor, an adult moor, and he got killed by the Indians because of the dirty stuff he was doing. They stayed up, murdered him. So it says that they came from a land that was called Aslan. All right, sure. Aslan. That means whiteness. All right. So we know that Lebanon in the Bible also means place of whiteness, the Lebanon, all right? So if you guys haven't watched the videos from Teach Me To Be Priestly in Jerusalem, King Drop, go watch those videos. They break it down. Arseref, they break it down. The cedars, the cedars of God, the cedars. Native Americans honored cedars too. You build most of your durable uh, uh, buildings and everything with cedar. It's the it's uncorruptible. It lasts for years. Cedars. We lived with the cedars in the forest. They protected us. It's a frequency thing. They have frequencies. The cedars. That's why they call the cedars of God in the Bible. All right. So Lebanon. There's many cedars up there in Utah and Aslan. So the, it says that they were named by the name Meshitin, which means Mexicanos. Because of their priest, Lord, who was guiding them, 
whose name was Meshi. Meshi. Right? <laughs> so their pre their priest lord Meshi was guiding them. So let me show you. So how do you say hold on, sorry. Yeah, that Meshi. But what is Moshe? Okay then. Okay, so we gotta go to Moses because they don't, you know, they make us go the long way. Let me see. Meshi. So Moses or hey. Moshi. So Moses or Moshe or Meshi. Meshi Khan, Meshek. Meshek means savior. Moshe. Meshek really means a deliverer. That's right. Not just a specific person, but somebody who delivers, who, who delivers their people to the promised land, who delivers. So Moshe, Meshi. All right. So we got Yehoshua, right, who took over after. Uh, Moses. What I want to show you is Deuteronomy 34, right? I don't know if anybody has ever read this verse, but we're gonna we're gonna freestyle. We're gonna surf it right near live. We're gonna show you that this is in Utah. All cool. right. We so the, it says the death of Moses. It says then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab. All right. Let's go. Let's do this. So watch. Let's go to Mount Nebo. Where is Mount Nebo? All right. This is what Google. This is perfect. I, I'm glad they did that. So Google, when you put Mount Nebo and you and you just put it on Google, the first thing they throw and the image they throw is Mount Nebo over there in the Jordan, the Hebrew. I mean, you can actually see the land. You can see the water. It's yeah. I guess it's a mountain, right? Let's see how big tall it is. So it's they say it's 720 meters, 2,300 feet. All right, you know. All right, no needle, right? All right, now let's go to. You know what? They didn't even throw it. You see, they they used to throw it as the second thing. Now they don't even give it to me. So check it out, Mount Nebo, Utah. All right, Mount Nebo, Utah. Now, we want to talk about mountains. All right. So Mount Nebo has two summits. The north summit reaching 11,933 feet. So which is, would be considered more of a mountain? All right, then. All right. So we just went to that little hill over there. That's duplicate. We got to understand they duplicated everything on that side to fit their history. All right. So named supposedly after the biblical Mount Nebo. All right. What are they saying? That, that it's named after the biblical Mount Nebo. All right. Now then they throw the other mount, the other hill. It's a freaking hill. There you go. <laughs> 720, 710 meters. All it's right. A it ain't nothing but a slope. Okay. But what I want to do now is uh, since we're in Mount Nebo, we're going to go to Google uh, Maps. All right. We're gonna go to Google Maps, okay. And uh, you know, can drop much love, much a hop for showing us this. I did a video on this as well too, so people, because I think this is very important that I had to do the video too. This needs people need to know this, man. It's not just because Mormons went there. I'm gonna show you. This is too many coincidences. All right. Where's my thing? All right. So Mount Nebo, right? So the verse told us, again, let's go back to it, that Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab, right? The plains right. of Moab. All right. So let's go directions. All right. We're going to look for Moab. Fuck. I'll just show you on the map. I don't even need to get the directions. All right, I'm going to show you where Moab is. All right. Oh, here we go. Came back. Excuse my network is a little slow. Oh, it's all good, bro. Just, uh, you might have to just give it a few seconds out because I know you got a slight delay. But it's, it's, it's up, though. Um, uh, yeah, I can see the red cursor on the spot you're trying to. 
Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah it's this thing. Okay, so let me just go to the verse real quick while it loads. So it says that he, from the plains of Moab, right, a plain, he climbed Mount Nebo. And then he said that from there he went to the, the top of Pisgah, another mountain, across from Jericho. All right? It says the Lord showed him the whole land of Gilead to Dan, all of, the, all of Naphtali, the territory of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah, as far as the Mediterranean Sea. All right, so all the land of Judah. All right, so you can go to Mount Nebo, right, in um, Israel. Can you really see all the land of Judah? Now, if you're standing on top of Mount Nebo, 11,000 feet up in the air, you're going to almost see the Pacific Ocean all the way from there. Okay. Or what, he calls, or what he calls the Mediterranean Sea in the book. All right, so as far as the Mediterranean Sea slash Pacific Ocean. All right, so, damn, man, let's just let's just Google it, man. Man, I wish I could show you with this. It's not, it's not cooperating. So Moab is actually, let me show you guys. All right. Yeah, I'll say it's my fault. With us, we we in here. We all the way in, guys. We 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 trying to get a feel of them ethers, y'all. Y'all know how it is. All right, so we got. I don't know. You guys can see. I'm just gonna search for the city so you guys can see. I'm not making this up, man. All right. All right, so we got Moab, Utah. Moab is a city in the eastern Utah. It's gateway to massive red rock formations in Arches National Park. You go to Arches National Park, they have a Garden of Eden. They have a section called the Garden of Eden. You go to Arches National Park, you're going to see a lot of arches. You're going to see a lot of uh, weird rock formations. And you get, If you have a keen eye, you're going to see that a lot of these are not all natural. You'll see rocks, huge rocks balancing, like one of those balance rocks. You'll see there's actually a place called Balance Rock here. That's what I'm talking about. That was put there on purpose. All right, so we got Moab, and uh, it, it is a plain. It's not like a mountainous part. It's actually a deserty part and plain. There's actually a city there now called Moab in the center of it. Uh, all right. So he said he also went to the top of Pisgah from Mount Nebo. So Word. All right, I'm gonna go faster. My fault. I'm gonna go fast. I'm just gonna show you that they exist. So fuck you showing did, you bro. the map. All right, he's got. All right. Yeah, man. Y'all wave with us, y'all. We flowing. We just, we still ain't got to the bread and butter yet. <laughs> Yeah, let, while that loads, let me go to the presser, John. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> all right. This is from Lost Tribes and Promised Lands, uh, the book from uh, uh, Ronald Sanders, I believe his name. This is a really, really good book. You guys want this? You know, send an email. This chapter is called Prester John of the Noble Ethiopian. And it says, let me just zoom in a little bit. A place off of Egypt, it says, on the Catalan map, a Saracen king is described as being always at war with the Christians of Nubia, who are under the rule of the emperor of Ethiopia, a land of Prester John. So, again, being referenced. <clears throat> to be in an Ethiopia. I just want to draw on that Sarah, Saracen. We got to always understand what Sarah, you know, what do they mean by Sarah? I know they say it's Muslims, but when you go to the etymology, it doesn't really say it specifically, you know, it does have a root word. We know there's a Sarah. Okay, so we know we know that the Arabs, right, come out of Ishmael, right? So as it says here, Sarah, right, was the half-sister wife of Abraham and the mother of Isaac as described in the Hebrew Bible. Her name was originally Sarai, 
according to uh, Genesis. It says, God changed her name to Sarah as part of the covenant after Hagar bore Abraham, his first son, Ishmael. All right. All right. So when we're talking about Sarah scenes, you know, we're most likely talking about Sarah's sons or the, the sons, you know, from the tribe of Abraham. That's right. You know, from the tribe of Abraham. So we know we got Isaac and we got Ishmael. All right. So we know even though they're, they're Arab today, that tribe, they, they are Hebrew, right? They come out of Abraham or Abraham or Ibra, Ibra, Abra, which is feathers. Abraham, Hiawatha. It's in the old Ashby Bible, Hiawatha, contemporaneous with Abraham. He was a lawgiver. Hiawatha was a lawgiver just like Moses. Kukulkan, Quetzalcoatl, lawgivers just like Moses. And Joshua. Right. All right? So... Let me see if it loaded. Well, we got Mount Peace guy there. Bottom line, you do the research. This is what I'm going to do. It's not loading, but you do the research. I found Gilead. I found Dan or Daniel there, the city. I found Nef Nef Nefti. I found Euphrame and Manasseh. Manasseh is no longer in maps because the city is a ghost town now. Google yeah. Manasseh, Utah. Google Manasseh, Utah, and you'll find it. So... From Mount Nebo, in top of Mount Nebo, in Utah, you can see the whole land of, what is it called again? Utah, what is it called again, people? Judah, right? That's right. Utah, right? We're in Utah still. Judah. So again, from that mountain peak, he saw the whole land of Judah as far as the Mediterranean Sea, right? So this is the chapter when... Um, Moses dies because if you know the Old Testament, he never made it supposedly to Jerusalem. He passed right. the torch or you know the sephir, the staff, yep. as commanded by Hawa to Jehoshua, who they call in uh, Wikipedia. Let me just show you a lesser prophet. How come they haven't made a movie about Jehoshua, the person who actually delivered the Israelites to Jerusalem? They don't want you to correlate with the true right. deliverer. Or right. check. They're not trying to make you, hey, 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 wait a minute. Who's this Jesus guy? He went into Jerusalem on a donkey saying peace. That's not the real story. Jehoshua went in with the sword. He cleansed the land, right? It says here, according to Hebrew Bible, Joshua or Jehoshua was one of the 12 spies of Israel sent by Moses to explore the land of Canaan, right? So before when they were during this migration, after they left Aslan and after they was in Mexico and everything settled in all, in all those areas, right? They, they was like, no, we, we still head into our promised land. We know where it is. Canaan, Jer Cusco, Jerusalem, the naval, right? Sacsayhuaman. So he sent Joshua and uh, other spies to uh, those lands, Canaan. And when Joshua came back, he, then he saw giants there. That he didn't know how he, they were going to defeat them and get them out because they were basically the size of grasshoppers next to them. They were like unto grasshoppers. That's biblical. Read that. All right. So there was giants in these lands. If you read the accounts of the Inca, they'll tell you straight up they didn't build those megaliths. They tell you straight up. They told the Spaniards. They said this was built by giants before us. Incas, just like the Israelites came into Cusco, just like the Israelites came into Cusco. That's right. All right? So these giants, Canaanites, Mobites, Jebusites, the Anak, the kids of Anak, Hebron. You know, Hebron is Tiwanaku. I know I'm going all over the place, but Hebron is Tiwanaku, Anak, where the giants dwelt, which Joshua had to cleanse those lands too. That's in Bolivia, Tiwanaku, south of Jerusalem, just like in the biblical description so like you described you right wrong. all right so be I'm, I'm so hopefully you see again we read from um author that um they actually came from Aslan right and led by their leader uh Meshi right and so how much correlation more do you need we got the Meshi Kug, the Meshex and just go into their temples in the books and chronicles of how the temples look their language you know you start seeing a lot of 
Hebrew stuff or old world stuff, paleo. Um, actually, on the way, this is a good one. So if you guys know the story of the Ten Commandments, right? Where can you find the oldest written account of the Ten Commandments in Paleo Hebrew in stone? Where can you find that? That's right, man. All right, so we got the Los Lunas Decalogue Stone. All right, where is this? This is a large boulder on the side of a hidden mountain, hidden near Los Lunas, New Mexico about 35 miles south of Albuquerque that bears a very regular inscription carved into a flat panel. The stone is also known as Los Lunas Mystery Stone or Commandment Rock. Commandment Rock. The stone is controversial, all right? Why is it controversial? What are we talking about? You know, they don't want us to put all this together and that some claim the inscription is pre-Columbian and therefore proof of early Semitic contact with the Americas. They mean Shemitic or the sons of Shem or Hebrews. Semitic, Shemitic. All right. So further on down, it says that this is, and it tells you all the professors who went out and studied it and everything and how they found it. And then the bottom it says, estimated the inscription, George E. Morehouse, a colleague of Barry Fell, estimated the inscription could be between 500 and 2,000 years old and explaining its freshness and lack of patina as being due to frequent scrubbing to make it more visible. All right, so this is, let me just show you a close up. So this stone has paleo, a Phoenician type Hebrew on it, all right? And there in New Mexico, we know if you're coming from Utah and you're going down to Mexico, you do have to go through Mexico. You know? Um, there's old maps of the U.S. showing that Utah was that whole Four Corners region. Utah was right next to California. There was no Nevada. That whole area was Utah. New Mexico, the Grand Canyon, the Grand Con. Grand Canyon, the Grand Con. That's right. All right? And this is all in the land of Judah. All right? So this is the, the stone right here. And... What I just want to show is that we have so much correlation. This is just crashing to the surface. You know, tune in. I got a lot of videos coming. You know, it's a lot of information to put together, but I want to put it on right for everybody to see. Tune in to Jaguar, Olmec, Aboriginal Power, Chief Holiday. Go check out Medicine Man, Natural by Law, um, UB2 News, Autochton is one, King Drop, Lex Will. Oh, man, there's so many. Hiram Mart. You That's know, right. there, there's so many. Teach me to be priestly, Jerusalem. There's so many. There's a lot of knowledge right here. Take advantage. The seals are open. You know what I mean? That's right, y'all. And, and we really, I, we we do this. And it takes time, but we also try to get y'all time to go check out these things too. You know, you know, it's 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 been a lot of work being done, especially by this brother here, Corey Mayo, y'all. Y'all see, he going in none stop because he has a lot to offer man and check out all the videos you can on this brother channel and all the channels that he mentioned you know of course like he said a1 chief holiday aboriginal power medicine man you know phoenix moon uh tavis santa's back in y'all so you know we got plenty i mean we got information that you really can study for years, man, that people don't put out, especially, you know, once again, 432 drop, man. He got hours and hours of series of videos, y'all, that can catch y'all right on up to what we can be applying ourselves to and just keep communicating and networking because that's the work we should do outside of this youtube world we're supposed to be connecting with each other you know creating classes for for all type of uh skills uh just meeting up planning trips uh uh you know seeing if y'all some of y'all related all that man we, we supposed to just because we are family now y'all we, we we gotta stick together and hang in there so and, you gotta know you know there's noble kings you know here so that's why we're trying to show you that you know that's right. My fault. I didn't mean to interrupt, man. Go ahead. Oh, no, nah, you're good. You're good, man. You know, um, 
I know if you want to go ahead and share some of them images, man. I know some of the people probably getting a little laid down, yeah. man. If you wanted to, man, it's up to you, though. You know, yeah, man. I you know, you know, I know you want to say some stuff. I, I got, I got a little carried uh, away and stuff. So, with that, oh, nah, my good, bro. Um, hey, the bill is, man. I'm telling y'all, man. Like this is this is how me and this brother we can sit on the phone four five hours at a time or on on the laptops just going through trying to decipher this information trying to figure out how we're gonna put it out and we just really just decided to go live as we was you know studying with each other because we like look man we done, we gotta let something out you know we gotta let it out to be able to see okay what have we got what 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 are we really trying to get to here you know because we we learning a lot and and is some of it new some of it is just relating to what we already know but it's still something to decipher and, and, and it's a task y'all you know we got lives you know we got children we we got you know we got to make our money when we you know we get our jobs and stuff like that man so you know we hey we here man like we say these books they're available to y'all, you know, to the ones who really want to put it to good use and really put us, you know, on the upper, you know, higher level, man. So y'all just stay tuned, man. We 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 keeping it fire flamed up, arrows flying, tomahawks charged up with lightning bolts and and freaking uh whatever else, man. We we dropping it, y'all. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. We getting it in, man. Yeah, yeah, bro. So, so I said, so they, they're always going to be like, where yeah, is this know. land, this remarkable country of Prester John? Where is this mythical terrestrial paradise? Our magnificence, it says, writes Prester John, dominates the three Indias and extends to the farther India. They're not saying it extends to India. The farther India. Which is the farther India? What are we known as over here, man? And what did they consider the 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 you know the caribbean the west indies right india indies india south america was considered india that's at one point so we're talking about over here you know like i like i said everything that is your story they turn it into myth legend mythology all right it says here that in fact the presser john letter may at least in part have jewish roots in the desert that separates the mountains so you know they there is a whole bunch of info that you can dig on and press to john and it's going to lead you right back to here your noble self, your negus, your noble self, you know, kings, queens, all right? Holy, holy, meaning very pure, pure, spiritual, you know, much wealth and not just in, 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 in terms of like how we think of wealth, like finance and money, but wealth and meaning he had the rivers, he had the food, everything, right. all the resources, the tribal right. people, everything, all right? And that was just like one point. See, this is one last part I want to get through. It says when Alexander travels through its countryside to meet the queen, he sees marbles suggestive of the later realms of Prester John, crystal bearing mountains, which reach as high as the clouds of heaven, and deep caves with rocky descent. All right. So this is the kind this is how they describe America, these people. Let's see. All right, I guess we could uh yeah, I don't know. It's it's in there somewhere, man. But uh yeah. You know, it's a lot of info to digest and uh you know I appreciate yeah. everybody just, just tuning in, uh being here. Uh let me just show them one of some of these images, I guess. This is from uh the antiques of Mexico, what we were talking about in the beginning, we didn't even get to it, but um, there's like three or four volumes filled with images of uh, the depictions they, they have of, 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 let me see the temples they have here, let me show you. This is one of them, I just want to show you guys. So, what does that look like? All right, I mean, to yeah, me, it looks like yeah, the Tower, yeah. Tower of Babel. So it says the Lost Pyramids of Mexico, San Cristobal Teopantepec. Accounts of early European explorers exploration of Mexico during the 18th and 19th century are replete with descriptions of ancient pyramids 
lost cities and mysterious monuments that have since disappeared or become lost. So when I was reading these books, Antiquities of Mexico and all this stuff, they're clearly telling us how Cortez and them destroyed certain pyramids. They demolished them. All right, they, they straight up demolished them. All right. So this pyramid it says it has Dupai, who was actually an archaeologist and anthropologist that went there, describes this pyramid as being as Egyptian style. All right. And uh, you know, and then he starts talking about Babel. It does look like Babel, and uh, eh, you know, it's in these books. It's uh, available for everybody to go dig on, man. With these images, you know, I was showing. Uh, look at these granaries. I think I, I think these are granaries they had in the mountains, or just covered up pyramids. Yeah, you know what I mean, and we we know that Joseph stored corn for seven years because of the famine. That was going to hit Egypt. He saw a dream, right? He had a dream. He told the Pharaoh, you're going to have seven years of prosperity and seven years of famine. And there was large granaries. All right. And we know that the Mayas talk and have tales of also large granaries where they stored uh, corn, mountains of corn. Right. And, and, you know, so we, we can see all these uh, granaries here as well. All right. This is a, this is a cool one. This is a, a temple. I want to show you this. The guy who went there and describes it, he says this is more like Cyclopean, uh, Greek, Syrian, you know, it, like Roman temples, you know, and not like pyramid like Egypt. So we didn't just have pyramids. You know, we had all kinds, all the architectural things you will find outside of America, you will find it here. And you can see the, swat, the swastika on the top of this building, you know. Uh, I know because I know that symbol, and I know that that's an original de uh, depiction of the swastika before it was turned into the swastika. You know sure. what I mean? All right, so this is a Toltec uh, monument, as you can see very clear. These are actual depictions of how these places look. Look at this. It looks like you're in Greece or Rome, an ancient ru ruin of Rome or Greece. Because if you really know about chronology, and a lot of scholars and professors have done it. They'll let you know that um, it's starting to appear that Greeks and Romans didn't ex exist like we think they did. Not ancient times. Not ancient times. All right. So who are the real Romans? You know, is that the Edomites who are also, you know, of the tribe of uh, Jacob, right? One of the uh, his uh, grandkids because his son is Esau. Esau had Edom, and that's where the Edomites come from, and that's who we relate to the Romans from research. All right, so like I said, tribal warfare more and more means you know it's been tribal warfare, man. So you can't look at more like a fraternity because at some point it wasn't that; it was just skin color. Um, but you can see if some people have certain knowledge and they know this stuff that I'm showing you guys today, because if I can do this without a college degree. If I can really dig on it like this and correlate all this, imagine all these people that had the knowledge, always all this information, what they know, what they've been keeping from us on purpose. And a lot of these Freemasonic right. pre -Masonic secret societies, Boule, all that, whatever you want to call uh, Shriners, you know, um, they know what's up. They know the lots were split evenly, but they always wanted all the lot, especially the center of the earth or the navel that was promised to Shem the middle of the earth, which was, again, the navel, you know, Cusco's name, the navel, all right? So if you're talking about middle, we are between Lemuria and between Atlantis, right? That's right. So That's if right. you look at an old world perspective, you're talking about middle, all right, we're between two great continents or kingdoms that existed supposedly anciently, right? So you think we're not going to have influence? We have no influence, and we're in between those two ancient kingdoms. Come on, you know, it's like, if you can't go past Atlantis, if you can't, you know, go past Caral Supe, go past corn 10,000 years agriculturally, you know what I mean? You, you, then you can't, you can't say cradle of civilization anywhere else. That's right. You know, that's right. The cradle is here. The cradle of civilization is here. All right. So, um, yeah, man. Then I, yeah, man, these, these places are there. You can see this is like across the floor plan. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. And these are actual pictures and drawings, y'all. So, so.
So what I want to get for, uh, for people to get from this 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 specific uh, show tonight, and uh, thanks for uh, to Jaguar to have me here, um, is that we do have, we are digging. We're not taking anything uh, lightly. We're not just believing the first thing we read. We're trying to prove ourselves wrong. And we're not doing this for competition. Right. We're doing this because we care. We want our people to lift up, to know who they are, to know the truth. All right. We had thousands and thousands and thousands of pyramids over here. Not just one little area of congr congr uh, how you say that? Congratulatory concrete or something like that. Yeah, it's concrete. You be yeah, there you go. UB2 News, all right? He put out a video showing that, proving that, showing the maps. They didn't have pyramids in them in old times. They didn't show no Giza pyramids, these real old maps. That wasn't there, man. Movie stage, man. Movie stage. The rabbit hole is deep, all right? The rabbit hole is really deep. They got us looking at the other side the whole time, or at least one section when it was the whole plane. The whole plane, man, especially here. All right, we had so much structures and 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 cities and towns. Bartolomeu de las Casas says that everything they took is illegal. It's not legal. They we you know you were kings. You had dukedoms. You had principalities. These were your lands. They came and snatched it. They had no sovereignty over it. Talking about sovereign, you know what I mean? That just means great ruler, chief. You were chiefs. You were sovereign. All right. You don't need to prove it to anybody. That's right. If, if you still, if they can, if they can go to Bonham Park, let's just show them before we leave. Bonham Park murals. If they can go there, knowingly, they 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 know they they bust through the the pyramid from the outside. They went inside the pyramid that has not been uh, touched by any European or anybody ever since they left the the city, right? In Bonham Park. And this is what they found on the walls. These are not drawings. These are not Photoshop. You you take the trip over there. And it's on the walls. Go see yourself as a king. Go see yourself as the Khan, the Snake Dynasty, the Khans, the Great Khan, the Jaguar Warrior. As you can see here, they're wearing the Jaguar pelts. Who wears Jaguar pelts? It's not about leopard pelts. It's a Jaguar pelt. That's how you used to rock it. That's right. That's how you used to rock it. All right. So this is bone unpacked murals. All right. How more clear can it be? So if they can go there and see this and still tell us that you're African, right? You got to see, man. Somebody's 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 being a trickster. That's up to right. their old games. Up to their good old games. You know, it's nothing new. All right. But the only certain thing is that change always happens. That's the most certain thing, change. Change. You got to remember your mother and your father, not just the father. And we're not talking about your physical parents. All right? You think um, the Testament, um, the Ten Commandments is talking about honor thy father and thy mother, human humans? No, man. We're talking about ha, wa. Breathe in, breathe out. The framer, the shaper. The Mayas called it the framer and the shaper. All right. Hawa, the oldest form of Hebrew to mold, to mold, to create, right? to give the breath. All right. So you breathe in and you breathe out male, female. Without the female, we have no wisdom. If you guys read Proverbs 8, it'll tell you that wisdom was there from the beginning with. <laughs> Ha and Wa were together, and they created together. Wisdom and Ha. Hey, yeah, I exist. Hey, yeah, right. So let's go to Jawe. Cause we, they, you know, we gotta really dig into this stuff. So we go to Jawe. This is from 1869. So we know that's not ancient. They say that this is a reconstruction of the pentagram, J H W, uh, H. So if you take the Y out. Just t take the Y out and just say those three. How does those three letters sound? Hawa. Hawa. Right? In Spanish, in Spanish, we we say Hilva. The V in Paleo Hebrew, it was a W. It became a V in Latin. 
We didn't have V's in Paleo Hebrew. And it says it's based on the assumption that the tentagrammation is the imperfective Hebrew verb of Hawa, right? Earlier form of Heya. Heya, 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 Heya. Do you guys remember when you used to sing that? Was in the sense of the one who is the existing. Not that I'm named Heya. Props to Lex Will for making this clear. He's not saying my name is I am. He's saying, just tell him I exist. That's right. The, the one who is. But the earlier form is Hawa. Right? Hawa, the tentagrammation. Remove the Y. There's no Ys in Hebrew. In Paleo Hebrew. All right, so this goes deep. And when you start reading about Hayawata and Waka, Wakanda, and all the Hawas here, Waka in the U.S., Hawaii, all these words, you know, has nothing to do with the Middle East. All right. So I mean, I, I'm gonna end it right there, bro. So. Oh, you good, thanks. bro? That's that's exactly that's exactly. I was hoping you would get to that hey I form, man, because you know that's that's gonna be another thing. I'm gonna be advocating, advocating back, man. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. y'all know it, y'all, man. You know, so we ain't gonna hold y'all up too much longer, y'all. Um, we 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 will be having something to present, y'all. We actually are working on putting a video together, you know, together together, and also our own presentations, man. So y'all bear with us. Uh, stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel. Um, yeah. subscribe Subscribe, subscribe to yeah man and and subscribe you know like i say y'all look at the people we subscribe to um you know everybody man um take the proper time to really learn and study take notes uh write down the sites and the name of these books like i say anybody who's interested you know um hit us in the back chat if you already in hangouts or um just comment let me know you're interested in a book and uh, I'll leave my email or something or however we got to do this. I know everybody ain't comfortable with leaving the email on the public site. So however we can do it, uh, it will be done, y'all. And um, I just want to say so. you know, appreciate y'all for hanging with us. And I'm going to let Corey Mayo close it out however he need to. Um, appreciate y'all once again. And we got more to come, y'all. So. Just, just uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass my email. Just you know, I don't really care. So okay. I'm gonna pass my email so y'all can have it. Y'all wanna build with us? Y'all wanna you know have questions? You want you know you want some of the library, bro? Uh, you know I listen. I got all, almost 400 books. I got four almost 400 books for you guys. Can you guys help me do the research? Cause I can't get to all the info. That's right. Help me. All right. So I got almost 400 pdfs scholarly verifiable sources all right not just you know <laughs> what they're saying google scholarship you know but um i just want to say you know support everybody that's doing this man because some of us we know we don't have to prove it or do videos i do it because i like to I like to teach. I like to do it, and I'm, I'm pretty, and I enjoy it. I'm good at it, so I do it. And I'm not saying good because I want to boost myself. What I mean is, I'm good at like putting it all together and like and like editing and doing the whole technology thing and all that. That's what I mean. But you know, some of us already know this stuff. They don't need to prove any of this or make videos. That you just gotta listen to what they're saying to you. All right. You want the sources? Come through the channel. All right. And if you follow me. You know, I apologize if, you know, I haven't lived, put up a video, but, you know, we've been building, I've been building with everybody. I've been going live with people and uh, it's hard because there's a lot of info and we're trying to put it together right for you. All right. Go check out my thought videos. If you want a real <laughs> of symbology of where all these symbols all right. come from, Freemasonry, you know, because I'm going to get to the point of where I'm going to show you it's from here. But first I wanted to clarify uh, what they mean and, and where they come from, you know, uh, Again, go check the City of David video, uh, Peru, if you haven't seen it, all the correlation. I just skimmed through it really today. 
the Hebrew Cup of Colored Tribes. If you haven't seen the indigenous uh, American to African American, it's four parts. And I got way more parts coming. I got part five, six, seven, eight already. But Hebrew Cup of Colored Tribes, that's my next video. Because uh, in the first two, I showed, you know, a lot of internet sites and everything. People say, oh, this guy's a Google Scholar. Okay, so I'm going to show them. I'm going to do my whole part three and four just with books that I've found correlating what I'm saying. All right. So, you know, get, get, get with that. Watch my corn videos. If you want to see the true beginning of agriculture and civilization, you want to see that Egyptians had corn all over the hieroglyphs, the Babylonians, the Akkadians. Why did they have corn all over their, their monuments? Because they're retelling a story. They're retelling your story over there. They made a myth. That's why Osiris and Isis, those are gods to the people that were being taught this stuff because they never saw them. They never lived with them. These were tales and myths and legends, just their history, right? There's their mythology, but it was really talking about Atlantis slash America. And we know, heard earlier, Ameriqua, Ameriqua. Remember, that word is not from anywhere else, but here. That's right. All right. So thanks, thanks for tuning in, man. You guys have a safe uh, night, a blessed night. You know, vibe up, learn, come together around your community, teach everybody, teach the kids, keep them safe. Please keep them safe. Watch where you, you know, put your kids, who you give them to, keep them safe. They're our future. It's not about us. This change is going to come with our kids and our children because we're still fighting amongst each other. And it's just part of it. But, you know, this is going to spill out. This is going to come out. All right. You know, so, you know, peace to everyone. Um, Shalawan, Shabbata, Hawa. Shalawan, y'all. We'll holler at y'all real soon. Peace. Peace.